Damn, here it is. All right, I'm in here. I'm in here, I'm in here, I'm in here. We are live right now. What's going on, guys? Let me let everybody know on this gram that we live right now. And once I do that, we're going to be really good to go. I'm going to do that real quick before. What's going on, guys? Let me let everybody know on this gram. Let me turn that down. All right, everybody come on in the room right now. Let me grab this link here. All right. Now, bear with me one second. Once I do this, we're good to go. Bye, excuse me. Oh, where am I doing? Where am I? Where am I? Hold on, let me let the gram know we're doing what we do. And then, y'all, we are going to be all in there. Bam. Bam. Just did it. All right, man, how y'all doing, man? We're here. Oh, man, how are y'all on this wonderful Sunday? Sunday evening? Let me make sure my, my joints are lotioned up. How y'all doing, man? I hope everybody had a, a great week. Um, I'm a little late today. You know, we went swimming. We were swimming for a long time. Today, we're doing our swim thing. The sound is not low. The sound is great. I just heard the sound. All right, so you got to watch these guys in here trolling about the sound. That's a lot of people are trolling. Who just hit me up? Uh, shout out to Tyquin Campbell. Hit up the cash app. That brother is going to get a blessing in his life. What's up, Birmingham? How you doing, Birmingham, Alabama? Shout out to the beautiful Melanated family. I'm going to need everybody to hit that thumbs up button, please. I'm going to need everybody to hit that thumbs up button, ladies and gentlemen. You dig? Hit that thumbs up button. Yeah? So we're here. So you watch Vivarium today? How many of y'all watch Vivarium after I told y'all to watch the movie Vivarium. How many of y'all watched that movie? Very, very deep movie. Very freaked out, creepy movie. Very interesting movie. All right? Well, what's up? Shout out to Bahrain. Somebody's here from Bahrain. Somebody's here from Bahrain. Oh, man, there's so many things we're going to get into tonight. Um, again, everybody, before we get started, I need y'all to hit the thumbs up button right now. Hit the thumbs up button. Hit that like button. And then hit that subscribe button. We should get, we're, we're almost at 130,000 subscribers. Everybody, let's make sure we get to 130K subscribers tonight. If you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Let me turn my ringer down. A lot of folks are hitting the cash app. Shout out to Nuri B., but hitting the cash app, the cash app is right there just in case you want to give to the Melanoid Foundational Ministries. All right. And, and, and again, everybody, while I'm talking, you can get the Mink Slide Crushed Velvet album. Um, get that album at um, minkslide.com or click the link below. All right. So a lot of stuff we're going to talk about. Today's topic is NFL, meaning Negroes for Lease. We're talking about Negroes for Lease. Did you guys see the draft this week? The NFL draft, they were doing the NFL draft where people were at home. And first of all, I, I congratulate these brothers for the ones who got chosen, the ones who got drafted. You know, that's a great thing that you get your career started. That's that's first. I'm always happy for any black person being able to get into a career where they can take care of their families. I respect that. And I, I, I encourage that. You should get paid for your talent. Um, you know, it's a very important time in your life. But saw some things that were quite interesting. A lot of white girlfriends. There's a lot of Karens and Beckys. What's up? Everybody say what's up to little Bracy. That's our internet daughter right there. That's little Bracy. She's in there. She's in the chat room. How are you, little Bracy? That's our little she's 16. She's a student of the game. She's a student of the knowledge. So we, we try to take care of her and make sure she stays on the right path. Okay, but it was a lot of white girlfriends there. 
A lot of interesting things going on there. A lot of interesting things. Now, one thing that's interesting, what was that? It was one white player who got drafted to the Patriots. He got drafted to the Patriots. And this dude had a tattoo of a white supremacist group called the Three Percenters. The Three Percenters is a white supremacist organization. They pass themselves off as some type of patriotic militia group, but they're a white supremacist organization. They like throwing up the little white supremacist hand signals. So this this guy who got drafted to New England, to the Patriots, like what's his name, guys? The kicker. Yeah, he got a damn this tattoo on him, and then he start he's acting dumb, and the media's acting dumb with him. The media is acting dumb with his ass. See, that's how white supremacy, they protect each other. See, when they get caught out there doing a white supremacist's hand, white supremacist's hand signal, just like those white supremacists over at West Point, they were out there throwing up the white supremacist's hand sign. And the media was talking about they're playing some kind of sock game, some stupid shit they tried to make up. Yeah. Now this is somebody at Deadspin. Let me show y'all this article here. Somebody kind of called him out. He's trying to play dumb. And hold on, this is him right now. Photo of Patriot um, um, Justin Rawazer. Rawazer. I can't pronounce his last name. It said he calls to stir. That's his tattoo right there of the three percenters. Which is, that's their logo. That's this white supremacist group's logo. So it's not a coincidence that this guy just happened to get the goddamn tattoo. The logo displayed of a far right group. I hate when they call these white supremacists far right groups. He said, what did he say? He said he didn't know what the logo stood for when he had it put on his body. This is what, they always play like that. They always act dumb. When it comes to racism, I told you this, the white supremacists and the white supremacist suspects, all, they pretend to be the dumbest people on the planet when they get called out. Now, they're, they're geniuses any other time. And yeah, of course he's MAGA. So it's always, I was a baby. Oh, I got the tattoo when I was younger, dude. I was a teenager. I have a lot of family in the military. I thought it stood for military support. Shut the fuck up. No, you didn't. Stop it. Stop it, stop it, stop it. You didn't. You know exactly what it was, dude. He's playing dumb, which is what they always do. So black folks, this is why I tell black folks, let's stop this thing where we are always trying to educate white people about racism. That's the worst thing ever you can do. That's a waste of damn time. <clears throat> That's a waste of time. You yeah. That is a complete waste of time trying to educate these people on racism. Because they know. They play dumb. You don't have to educate them. They know what the hell they're doing. And it's not your job to educate these folks. They know what the hell they're doing. It's your job to protect yourself and other black people from the racism so you won't be harmed by their racism. Okay, let me get my... my, my D is not in here. People are complaining about a lot of trolls in the room. So we're going to have to mod a couple of more people up. Where are my old school folks who've been in here for a minute? Let me mod some other people up if I can. Where are my old school people that's been in here for a minute? Is, is Ola in here? Where is Ola? I got to call Ola. Ola, shout out to Ola. I saw Ola call me today, but I was in the pool earlier. I got to call my dude Ola. And let me see. Where are my old school people who's been in here for a minute? I don't only... Only people who's been in here for a minute. Who's been here for a long time? You know how I can tell? All right. Let me, I'm, I can tell who's been in here for a long time. Name, name J. Slim's poem book. <laughs> Let's see. I'm going to do a test real quick. Let me see who can name J. Slim's poem book. Where my people at? Who can name J. Slim's poem book? You been for five years? Let me let me see. Hold on. I'm about to mod some people now. Hold on. If you can name J. Slim's poem book, you, okay. 
Michael, I got, okay, Mike. Okay, hold on, where's Mike, where's Mike, where's Mike? Where you at, Mike? I, I just lost you. Okay, okay, where's Mike? I just, Michael Warden. Okay, oh yeah, Mike is my dude. Okay, add moderator, okay. Mike, I got you as a mod. Okay, so now everybody knows the answer now. <laughs> it's blood from my heart, not blood in my heart. It's blood from my heart. <laughs> Shout out to Jay Slim, by the way. All right, let me do another test to see who's been here for a long time. What was the name of the 13-year-old white boy who used to be in our chat room in the old Ustream page? When I used to do the Ustream show, what was the name of the 13-year-old white boy who looked like Eric Cartman? If y'all been around, y'all know who I'm talking about. What was his screen name? Now I can really tell who's been here for a minute. It was a 13-year-old white boy who used to troll. Come on, let me see where y'all at. Someone said, Billy, nope, it ain't Billy, nope, come on. It was a 13-year-old white boy, not Scooter. Come on, I can tell who's been in here for a minute. No, it wasn't Billy, y'all making up names. Nope, 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 it was a 13-year-old white boy. Come on. Come on, where y'all at? You, you almost, somebody almost had it. It ain't Ace Monkey, no, it ain't him, no. Nope. Because he got on camera one time. That's why we knew it was a 13-year-old white boy. He got on camera. Come on, where y'all at? I'm trying to see who knows. Oh, okay, Global Network. Almost got it. You almost got it, Global Network. Hold on. Where y'all Come on, y'all should have known. Come on, I thought y'all were old school with it. Somebody almost had it. No, he, remember his screen name? This was back in the, um, the, the YouTube, the Ustream, the Ustream days. It was, come on, y'all. You almost had it. Somebody almost got it. Hold on, where y'all at? Come on, y'all should know this little boy's name. Faucet me almost. Y'all should remember this little white boy, man. He used to be trolling in the room all the time. If you've been around for a minute. Y'all, some people, y'all almost got it. <laughs> y'all don't remember. Come on, man. I thought y'all been, I thought y'all was some riders. I'm waiting for the answer, see? That's you gotta be die hard to be to know that answer. Not Trag. No, we everybody knows who we know who Trag is. Okay, yeah, none of y'all got the answer. Cause some of y'all came close. Some of y'all came close. Um Okay, yeah, y'all just throwing different names. Y'all just making up names at this point. Okay, so some of y'all just making up names. Some people are saying it was Mini, Mini Mac. That's close. It wasn't Mini Mac, though. Where y'all at? Come on. I'm, I'm, a, I'm not going to move on to somebody guess that white boy's name. Or remember that little white boy's name. Wasn't Matty Ice? No. Nope, somebody, that's the answer. Okay, 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 so let me, let's try another one. Let's try another one. Okay, because nobody got the answer. It was, his name was Mini Pimp. Remember Mini Pimp? Some of y'all almost had it, but y'all didn't get it. His name was Mini Pimp. It wasn't Mini Mac. Y'all kept, some people said Mini Mac. That was close. But it was Mini Pimp, a little white boy named Mini Pimp. <laughs> and then he got on camera, it was a 13-year-old little white boy. Now y'all should have remembered that if y'all been around for a long time. All right, let me let me get another one. Who was the girl that I used to have on there all the time? It was a sister down in Georgia who used to get on camera all the time. What was her name? 
Now, y'all should remember that because she used to be on there all the time on my old Ustream shows, on my Ustream broadcast. There was a girl from Georgia who was a listener, and we would have her on all the time. What was her name? What was her screen name? Oh, TH, sound like you said Minnie Mac, but T, I'm going to add TH as a moderator. I got him. Who's the girl? There you go. Let me see. BC, B Conscious got it. There you go. So I'm going to add B Conscious. Okay. Tyron. I'm going to add Tyron. Yep, it was Smiley. Yep. It was Smiley. That was the girl. Y'all got it. It was Smiley. Shout out to Smiley down there in Atlanta. Well, she, yeah, she's in Atlanta now. All right. So I got some new mods in here now. I got some new mods in here now. Okay. All right. So, yeah, we got some new mods. Not hot, don't believe her. All right. All right. So we got that straight. We got that straight. All right. So now we got the mods together. All right. I'm surprised y'all didn't remember... Mini Pimp. Yeah, I'm surprised y'all didn't meet, remember Mini Pimp. And um, so, yeah, there we go. We got enough. Yeah, let's go to the topic. Let's get to what we're talking about today. And how do y'all like my hair? I'm letting my hair grow out. You dig? I'm letting the hair grow out. And um, I'm getting the, this is my quarantine do. You know, I'm letting it grow out. And uh, I'm going to get some braids pretty soon. I'm letting it grow. Look, ladies, uh, how long do I need to have my hair grow before I get braids? Um, are there any hood rats in here? Um, I know most of the women here and the brothers, they're very upscale people. But are there any hood rats who happen to be in the room? Hood rats manage to braid what little scraps of hair and edges they have sometimes. So what, what are your secrets? I need to know. How long does it take to braid? Because y'all be somehow getting a braid on your de deprived edges to glue and strap on a, a wig. So I want to know how long it takes about an inch. About an inch? Okay. I'm, I'm getting some fucking braids. I'm getting braids. I just want to know how long is, do I need to get it? Because I, I know when you get braids, that's, that's going to help. Kind of make the hair grow a little bit, so I knew some 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 hood rats probably know, yeah. yeah about two inches. Got it. I'm getting braids on y'all niggas. You know, no braids are not ugly. I'm gonna rock braids because sometimes I don't. You know, this quarantine got me trying new things. It, it's got me trying new things. You know, I'm growing my hair out and. You know, I want to do some things with it. You know, it's about to be summertime, and, you know, I go swimming, and I'm going to do a lot of swimming, and I don't want to have to, you know, get my hair cut on a regular basis. So, yeah, I'm going to get some braids. I'm going to be walking around this bitch looking like Shamar Moore in that Tyler Perry movie. You understand? Oh, I'm getting them braids on their ass. Y'all just wait. What y'all going to do when I get them braids? Y'all ain't going to know how to act. Yeah? I'm going to get some braids. I'm going to get some rice braided in with the hair to make it grow longer. You know? I'm gonna get some rice braids. I've seen motherfuckers over in Africa do that shit. You be braiding the shit with rice in it. I'm too old for braids? How dare you? I'm not too old for braids. Your ass is not too old for a lace front. I see you, some of y'all, 50, 60 something years old, with a whole ass lace front all the way down to your back. And under that lace front, you look like Morgan fucking Freeman. So y'all not too old for a lace front. I'm not too old for braids, nigga. That's how I'm going to do it. Y'all just hating because I don't have a receding hairline. I got a nice, robust hairline on y'all ass. So don't fucking hate. Motherfucking participate. <laughs> you just hate because my shit is robust. <laughs> Come on, you think I'm, this nigga think I'm playing. Nigga, y'all gonna look up, and y'all gonna be like, that nigga looks like Trey Song's first album. Y'all think I'm bullshitting. Y'all keep playing with me. And watch. Watch the new Mink Sly video. I'm gonna be looking like Leroy from Fame without the moisture. 
All right, but anywho, any let, let's get to what we're talking about. All right, let's get back to what we're talking about. We got our we got our mods in here. Everybody hit that goddamn thumbs up button. We need to get about six thousand folks up in here watching live. We need to get that. We, we need let's get about six seven thousand folks in here watching live because we're gonna chop it up tonight. Now we're talking about the draft. We're talking about the NFL draft. We're talking about a lot of niggas out here with the Beckys. A lot of niggas had Beckys with them. A lot of these Beckys were trying to position themselves to get some shine. Even some of these other girls, some of the sisters with these brothers. They were trying to position themselves to get shine. You understand? I saw a couple of cats when they were getting drafted. Boy, those girlfriends were all skinning and grinning in the camera. Oh, they were trying to position themselves. Understand this. These brothers getting drafted. You know, a lot of folks are going to try to leech off of it. You understand? Some of these women know, hey. If I get me a little camera time here, Mona Scott Young might call my ass. Oh, I might get a damn show my damn self. Everybody say what's up. I was wondering where Ola was. Shout out to Ola. Ola, I got to call you. I was in the pool earlier when you called, Ola. I got to call you back when I'm done. Please remind me to call you back tonight, Ola. Um, she said, well, yeah, we got Ola in the house. So, yeah, Ola's going to mod this shit right on up. He's going to stop the bullshit with all these trolls up in here. But, um... A lot of these folks were out here trying to get shine. A lot of cats got the Beckys. Um, the the most infamous thing that happened was the brother Isaiah, is it Watson or something like that? Isaiah Wilson, something like that. This brother, he got drafted. And, you know, he was very emotional and he was crying and stuff like that. Hold on, let me go to my tabs here. And um, his white girlfriend was up there trying to clout chase. This is her. His white girlfriend, she was all up in the camera trying to get some shine for her damn self. And boy, his mama shut that shit down. Hold on, where, where we at? Come on, thing. Yeah, come on, man. Hold on. There we go. Let me get this shit together. So this dude... Okay, it was Isaiah Wilson. Okay, so y'all saw this. This this thing went viral where the girlfriend thought she was going to get her some camera time. Yeah, she looks like a little older white woman, so he's going to upgrade from that, by the way. So she tried to put her face damn right in the middle of the camera. Oh, she tried to make it about her. He's crying, and she jumped all on him, hugging him, and all this. So she, what's, what's going on with this? I'm, I'm, hold on, let me back all this shit up a little bit. Hold on, let me get my my screen and all that together, guys. Hold on. Bam. All right. So she got all in the camera trying to get some shine. She thought she was going to do a little clout chasing. Chloe, the clout chaser. And his mom hemmed her ass up. Look at this. Big tackle and Isaiah Will. From oh, what's going on with this thing? Come on, man. Hold on. All right, hold on. Come on. So the Titans get themselves a big tackle in Isaiah Wilson from Georgia. Look at mom. Came from Brooklyn, Poly Pep, Prep Country Day. Even a little time to adapt to the heat and conditioning in the South, playing at Georgia, and now he'll be playing. Nigga, did you see mom? Shout out to mom. Shout out to Mama Wilson said, bitch, if you don't get your ass up. And the white girl didn't want to leave. The white girl, the white girl tried to resist. <laughs> the white girl tried to resist. Mom said, hell no. No, no, no. You're not going to take the shine away from my son. Oh, no, you're not. <laughs> oh, you better stop resisting. Shout out to mom. Not that old Becky trying to clout chase, trying to make it about her damn self. You dig? <laughs> and this one right here with um, CD, him and his girlfriend. With CD and his girlfriend here. Hold on. CD Lamb. C hold on. The CD Lamb. I know y'all saw the one with CD Lamb and his girlfriend. She dated um, um, a basketball player. 
a professional basketball player in Atlanta, by the way. So this chick just goes from athlete to athlete, all right? So she, she you know, she's already getting clout. She's changing leagues, getting clout. So his girlfriend, CD's girlfriend, this is CD Lamb. Um, OCD, his girl, you know, she's going to be a basketball and a football wife. So, you know, yeah, Trey Young. She was rocking with Trey Young. That's right. She was rocking with Trey Young. So, you know, she, she, she scours the locker rooms. You dig? So she got a little comfortable. Somebody says she's a sports groupie. Okay, yeah, you know, whatever. The water seeps its own level. You get in where you fit in. But she got a little comfortable. She's tried to check his phone while he's on live TV. She picked up the phone. He snatched the phone from her ass and embarrassed the shit out of her. You know? To see he look just like his mama, he does. So this is her. And I almost felt bad for her. She, she you know, it's the, I felt secondhand embarrassment for the sister. Hold on, this is her. He can do that. He's a hit him very explosive. Give me that. that big hit, hold on to the football. Uh, knows how to find the open area in that defense. Poor thing. Oh, look at her face. Oh, poor thing. Oh, poor thing. Oh, he snatched that phone from her ass. Oh. And she tried to play it off. She tweeted something like, well, it was his agent who called. And I was just trying to answer the phone. What the hell you want to answer the phone for? The agent ain't trying to talk to you. The agent wasn't trying to talk to you, sweetie. Yeah, the mama was, everybody was looking real side-eyed at her ass. Everybody was looking at a real funny style. Let, sister, you got real comfortable. You, This brother just got the bag. The brother was cashing those millions of dollars in his mind, so the, the mackishness came out of him real fast. Y'all better understand, when a nigga hit, when that money hit, and the check ain't even in his hand yet, the check has been cashed in his mind. See, when the check is cashed in a nigga's mind, he's different. That nigga went from simp to pimp in seconds. The minute they announced his draft, all oh, the gators popped on his feet. Like, Bitch, give me that phone. I'm a millionaire now. You dig? Yeah, all that old phone snatching you've been doing. No, no, we're not doing that no more, dear. We're going to stop that right now. Little red bone. Hell yeah, yeah, she was bossing up on him. You know, he, he's like, no, I'm not a, a broke college student with potential now, bitch. I've arrived. <laughs> so what I'm going to need you to do is unhand that phone and get me an ashtray. Ashtray, bitch. Oh, he got—he turned into a Tyler, a Tyler Perry villain overnight. This nigga turned into a Tyler Perry villain. I said, ashtray, bitch. That nigga embarrassed her ass on live TV. Let's look at it again. Oh, see, they don't like a nigga. But see, when a nigga gets some paper, the rules change all of a sudden. When a nigga get, see, a lot of these women, they like a little a broke, dusty nigga who they can boss around. Oh, you can't when a nigga. When, when, when that money hit, all the tides turn. All the tides turn real fast. All the tides turn so fast. Look. Poor thing. I almost feel bad for him. And look at her face. All the embarrassment. Oh, God. Poor thing. Oh, poor. I, I, I low-key feel bad for her. I feel a little secondhand embarrassment for her. Because she, she was embarrassed. She tried to boss up, checking niggas' phones and all that, and got embarrassed. Boy, she had to. Boy, she had a little John Lewis look on her face. <laughs> Lord, eyes in good trouble. I should not have grabbed that phone. I spilled blood at the NFL draft. <laughs> Poor baby. Oh, I felt a little, just a little bit bad. I felt a little bit because she was so embarrassed. I felt just a little bit bad for her. Boy, she, she got in some good trouble. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, that nigga's going to turn into Nino Brown. Don't she look like the, the chick from New Jack City? She looked like her, too, right? Nino, you're ignoring me. Cancel this bitch. Pouring, pouring Ciroc on her ass. Go get it. Cancel this bitch. 
I'll go get another one. She has that look. Oh, poor thing. Oh, no. My nigga, you better be careful about that shit, dude. Because she's plotting revenge. She don't like that shit that she got embarrassed like that. So she's plotting revenge just like in New Jack City. Just like the chick. Remember, New Jack City, his old punk-ass Redbone was the one who snitched on him. She wouldn't got, you know, she, she wouldn't snitched on him. So he better watch out. She go start. She go start selling stories to the National Enquirer on his ass. You know, don't let Mona Scott Young call. She get her own damn TV show. So she got. You got to be careful with the red bone that you embarrass like that. She she's gonna be bitter and vindictive. You understand? So, you know that's that's what it is, ladies. When when a nigga get that bag, when a nigga get that paper, you you better act like you got some sense. You know, you're trying to. Pull rank on a nigga, especially because let me let me let's be real. This woman has dated other athletes, so she ain't one of them day ones. Let's be real, and he knows that by the way. Let, let's be clear, he knows that, and I think that nigga might the way he did that little move. That nigga might be dumping her pretty soon. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. It ain't like one of these chicks who like went to high school. She was a rider all the way through high school, all the way through college. LeBron's lady, how long has LeBron's lady been with him, by the way, guys? I don't know too much about their relationship. Some of y'all might know. I don't really follow the game like that. How long was LeBron? LeBron's lady seems like a rider. LeBron's lady seems like she's been a rider die. She seems she seems like a real good rider. Was, was she with him, like when he was in college? How long was she with him? Yeah, Ayesha Curry, she's a rider. I give her that. She's a rider because she's she was there 20, since high school. Okay. Since he was like, yeah, so yeah, that's that's some real shit right there. He's been with her since high school. Okay. Yeah. They seem like fucking riders. You can feel that shit. You can feel that energy. It's different when you got a rider like that. Not somebody who's, you've been dating other athletes. You, you, you understand? So I'm already a little skeptical. I mean, you a cool little trophy wife, but you ain't that bad. You can be grabbing my motherfucking phone on TV like that. You understand? We ain't, you ain't roll with me like that. Because the nigga's already had some skepticism in his mind. So right there, that's showing you. Yeah, Peanut's right. My lady's right. We've been here. Look at her. Come here. 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 What's up, baby? You about to roll out? Come on. Come on. Come on. Say hi to everybody. It's hot in here. It is very hot in here. What's up? This is my rider right here. What's up, man? No. Look at that. What's going on with you? What's happening? You got the baby here. <laughs> Lord. What's happening? You about to roll out? She's, she's about to... Bring some toilet paper to some family members. <laughs> All right. My shirt. What's the shirt say? Hawaii. Yes, yes. We'll be in Hawaii pretty soon. All right. Yes, indeed. You then? Yeah. So if I'm doing something, and you know, peanut check my phone, I wouldn't really trip, which she wouldn't do. But if I'm doing something, but she don't do that shit though. You know what I'm saying? She don't do that type of shit. I'm all looking at my phone. The fuck, I, I know that the, the Mac came out of that nigga. I'm on live TV and you checking my phone? Like, you don't give me that goddamn phone? This nigga, the first NFL party that pop off, that nigga's going to get taken. So that's just the, the let me tell you something. The look on the old girl's face, she knew that's the end. She knew, boy, her days are numbered. The look on her face, boy, that's a look of my days are numbered. Oh, that's a look of all oh, shit. Let me try to get, let me go get some fertility pills. Let me go get some Dr. Sebi uh, green sea moss to up these ovaries so I can get a baby out the game. She already knows. This is about, oh, the look she had on her face was like, oh, shit. 
This nigga just showed out on me on live TV. Uh-oh. Uh, let me see who else got drafted. <laughs> Shit. Let me look through the draft roster. God damn. Because this motherfucker, I got to go out here and campaign some more. <laughs> Shit. I got to get an OnlyFans page and sow, sow some pussy. <laughs> nigga. When a nigga gets some money, I'm telling y'all, niggas is different. When a nigga gets some paper, especially if you ain't been a rider, I'm the only folks we don't really trip hard about is somebody who's been riding with us for real when we didn't have nothing and, you know, people weren't dangling money in our faces. Because, see, it's one thing, too. What happens is a lot of these brothers are in college and people know that they're going to get drafted. So all of a sudden they try to act like that. These women try to act like they riders. Who, oh, hey, I know you ain't got no money now, but I'm here for you. They try to make a little quick investment, especially them white girls. They see potential. The white girls be seeing potential. So in college, white girls will start hooking you up with a whole bunch of shit. They try to get in early. That's what happened. Remember Russell Wilson? He had that little strong faced white woman with him when he got drafted. Now Russell's chilling with Sierra's little sexy ass. Yeah? So the white women, they try to invest real quick. When The minute they see some potential, right when that contract is about to be signed, some of them try to put their bid in real fast. Yeah? So, yeah. She find out. <laughs> Man. So, yeah, old girl, mm, my nigga put her ass in check real fast. But another thing, man, what I've been seeing with these, with this NFL draft, the way, now Sports Illustrated did a cover, and they got old dude dressed like a damn slave on the cover of the new Sports Illustrated. Let me see if I can pull that up. That's, hold on one second. Let me see if I can pull that up real quick. That's on the header of this broadcast here. But they got old dude looking like a goddamn slave. Hold on one second. Let me see if I can pull that up real quickly. Okay, hold on, where we at? Okay. So this right here, hold on. Okay, they got DeAndre, DeAndre Hopkins. Hold on, look at, now they got this brother on Sports Illustrated looking like a fancy slave. Look at the outfit they got on. That's not, that's not a coincidence, family. They got DeAndre Hopkins looking like a slave on here, man. That's not a coincidence at all. This is not a coincidence. They tried to, you know, put a leather handkerchief around his neck, but this is like a fancy slave. They don't do anything by chance. They don't do anything that's coincidental. They got that dude looking like a fancy slave. And they've been portraying these brothers as fancy slaves. One brother, they were, I'm looking at some of the stats that ESPN, and ESPN is like a big ass plantation. One brother they were talking about, he's 5-0 and oh this, he runs this fast, and he had a sexual assault charge that was dropped. I'm like, what the hell? I'm like, what, what the, what? What the hell are they talking about? They were talking about one of these guys who got drafted. I can't think of his name, but they were talking about a sex charge that he had. I'm like, what the hell? What the hell is that? So they setting these niggas up already. They already setting them up just in case. They already setting these dudes up just in case they need to, to stun on them and front on them and pull out some receipts on them. They already getting it started. And then, let me, let me, there's a lot of funny style stuff going on here. So T. Higgins, this is T. Higgins, let me, let me show that. They had T. Higgins put his stats up, hold on. And what, who did T. Higgins get drafted to? And this is the thing that bothers me. So this is T. Higgins. 
They were like hometown Oak Ridge, Tennessee. Finalists for Mr. Basketball held offers from LOU, AUB, and Tennessee. Sister Kiki played basketball. Mom Camilla fought drug addiction for 16 years. And we're like, what the hell? Like, what the hell is that? What? what, what? Okay. His mama fought drug addiction. That's something that you guys want to portray about this man? Yeah? Let me tell you something. That, that was extremely unnecessary. A lot of people were calling that out. A lot of people were calling that out. Yeah, what they don't want, family, they don't want another Colin Kaepernick. So they're coon vetting these niggas. They're, you know what? Somebody must be telling these niggas, boy, y'all better play ball. Y'all better not act no fool. We're going to fuck your money up. They're letting these, they're coon vetting these niggas. Boy, they have a, a, a batch of biscuits that they're going around like, you better smell this. Smell these biscuits because we're going to take them away the minute you act up. So it's something they're telling these niggas. Because these niggas are coon vetted right now. They're doing little shit like this because they've already vetted these niggas and let them know if you act a fool, if you are trying to protest, or you're trying to be on some Kaepernick shit, we're going to revoke your contract. They must have something in some con in the contracts now pulling these niggas' chains, getting them in line. Because the shit they're putting out is so disrespectful. Talking about his mama on drugs, that ain't got shit to do with the stats. That ain't got nothing to do with nothing. What you talking about? His mama on drugs? You understand? So, hold on one second. What, what team did T. Higgins get drafted to, by the way? What team did he get drafted to? And family, family, this is, the, this, this is not the, even the worst part about it. This is not the, this is the part, he got drafted to Cincinnati. Okay, the Bengals. So now they're sitting here talking about his mama's own drugs, which is very unnecessary. This is T. Higgins tweet. I'm proud of my mom for turning her life around for me and my sister. I have no problem with them showing the world that my mom is a true fighter. This nigga been coon vetted. They done broke this nigga already. He's already a buck broken coon. Damn, T. Th thank you. When I got beaten, when I got beaten, Selma, I told the police, thank you. They done already buck broken this nigga. Look, this is his tweet. This nigga is up here trying to pretend that shit is a positive. That's not a positive. Talking about your mama was on crack, your mama was on drugs. No, what they they no 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 they showing that my mama is a fighter. No, they're not. You, Sambo. No, they're not showing that your mama's a fighter. What they're showing is, hey, look at us. We're white daddy. We're white daddy, and we we save you niggas. Look at us, white daddy, saving these ghetto. Niggers from their crackhead mammies. Look at how great we are. That's what that is. This is the narrative that they're portraying. Look at how great we are. We save these poor downtrodden niggers from the ghetto, from their crack whore mothers. We saved them and gave, we gave them a better life. So they should be grateful. That's the blind side. Remember the movie The Blind Side? The good white people went and got the big buck nigga, saved him from the ghetto, and the mama was all on crack. Well, they love a crackhead black woman somewhere. Lord, no, no. you take care of my baby when I'm smoking now. They love that. They love the broken home narrative that the black person is great because of white people. This is the narrative. They like to show a black person's greatness because a white person made them great. So in the movie The Blind Side, Michael Orr was great, not because his daddy, his daddy wasn't around, his mama was a crackhead, but it was the white woman who made him great. They love portraying that narrative. Even Michael Orr hate that movie. My, he, he hated that movie too. But they always make it seem like it's white people who made the Negro great. That's why they don't never like to show black men with their parents. 
They don't like to show black men with their parents. If they do show them with their parents, they show them with their, their mama. They like to promote the single mother. They don't like showing how you don't see black male athletes with their mother and father. Definitely not with their father. That's very rare. They don't like to show that. And they don't like to show them with their wives either. They show the white ones with their wives. They always show the, the white players, even if they came from trailer parks, show them as family men. Yeah? They never show them with the father. They don't like to show that. They don't like to show them with their fathers. That's why they didn't like to show Michael Jordan with his father. Michael Jordan was very close to his father. And remember, if you're old enough, Michael Jordan's father was killed in under very suspicious circumstances. Michael Jordan's father was killed back in the 90s under very suspicious circumstances. He got killed on the side of a road. They said he pulled over to go to sleep and then somebody came and killed him. It was very suspicious. They don't like black fathers. LeVar Ball, they don't like black fathers. They don't like black fathers. You dig? Very suspicious. A lot of y'all don't know that. Some of y'all are too young to, to know that, but his dad got murdered. Michael Jordan's dad got murdered on the side of a road around the same time Cosby's son got murdered, by the way. Yeah? Yeah, Shaq was close to his, his dad. His stepdad was like a military guy. They didn't like to show that. Oh, they don't like Venus and Serena's dad either, Mr. Williams. They didn't like Mr. Williams. Mr. Williams would cuss their asses out. They did not like Venus and Serena's dad, Mr. Williams. Mr. Williams, hold on. Let me find a clip of Mr. Williams, by the way, cursing out that reporter. Hold on. I, that's, the, whoa, 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 whoa. that's the greatest clip ever. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on, I got it. That's the greatest clip ever. This is, for, for those who have not seen this interview, by the way, Mr. Williams, shout out to, I love Mr. Williams. Mr. Williams cussed this reporter out because the reporter was asking kind of some dumbass questions to Venus when she was young. This was Venus when she was very young, and the dad popped out of nowhere and cussed his ass out. Hold on. Have y'all ever seen, some of y'all might not have seen this. I love this. I love this. Shout out to the great foundation of black American Mr. Williams. I know I can see this. I know it. Okay, this audio is janky. Hold on, let me find a better audio quality. Hold on. Hold on, hold on. Da, 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 da. Oh, hold on. Uh, hold on. Let me find a better... Let me find a better audio version of this shit. Hold on, I don't like this version of it. That might be the only one. Hold on, damn. Okay, that might be the best quality I can get. Uh, okay. Okay, that just might be it. Hold on. I don't like that quality. Okay. I don't like that quality, but hold on. Let me see if this quality is better. Hold on. Hold on. Okay, that's, that's going to be the best quality I can get. Okay, so I just play that. Okay. Okay, come on, fam. Come on. Don't fuck around. Okay. Okay. This is the best quality. I know the sound ain't that good, but but this is it. Okay. Hold on. Shout out to Mr. fucking Williams. <laughs> I love that nigga. Mr. Williams about to slap that asshole. Mr. Williams was about to slap that asshole. I love it. He was like, wait a minute, she didn't told you now. Hold on now. She didn't told you what she 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 said it with confidence. Why you ask that's a black child now. He had his, you saw he had his hand in his pocket. You know he had a, a razor blade in that motherfucker. Hold on now, don't make me go in this pocket on your ass, cracker. Nah, she done told you now. I was gonna get in good trouble fucking with you. <laughs> you saw he had that hand in the pocket. Mr. Williams is from like Mississippi somewhere. Miss, you know there was something in that damn pocket. <laughs> Shout out to Mr. Williams.
Like, this is a black child. Don't keep asking her no dumb shit like that, trying to question her confidence. Oh, I love that brother. That's what they do. These white folks get around black kids and then try to second guess their confidence. And the dad saw that shit. If you're going to keep interrupting, I'm going to interrupt your ass. You keep asking this child all this now. <laughs> Shout out to him. Oh, Mr. Williams was about to give him an old school Mississippi ass whooping. You dig? That's the shot. The shit they don't like. They don't like black fathers like that checking the bullshit. He's from Louisiana, but I knew he lived in Mississippi at one point. He's from Louisiana, but I know he lived in Mississippi at one point. And yeah, she's she's bedwinching now. By the way, okay. Yeah, she's bedwinching. What 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 can we say? All right. She got her damn zaddy. All right. So there's that. But shout out to that brother for being a rider. Her greatness came from that damn dad. Remember, their dad made them great. The dad made them great. You understand? Hell no, he's no, no, that's not no immigrant. No, 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 that's not an immigrant at all. That's a full foundational black American. Oh, a lot of immigrants ain't gonna run up on them like that now. <laughs> oh, that's a full foundational black American right there. Yeah. And is Mr. Williams still alive? Is he still alive? I don't I don't know if he's still alive now or what. I don't know if he's still alive. But um is he still alive? He might have died a few years. I'm I'm not sure. Yeah. I don't know if he's still alive. Hey, yeah, Joe Jackson used to carry a pistol on him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's still alive. Good. I know um, Richard w Williams, he had, he married a, a young chick. He's 78, so he's still alive. Good. Is he still married to that young chick? Oh, this brother married a, a young lady. He's like 78 years old. He's, he's alive. People say he's still alive. Is he still married to old girl? He's very sick now. Okay, that's he's sick, but he got over it. Okay. Oh, he didn't go to the wedding? Oh, he's like, fuck all that bedwinching bullshit. So, yeah, my dude, Mr. Williams, married a young chick and had a baby by ass. This motherfucker, 78 years old, having young babies. He up here, Chuck E. Cheese, with a walker. <laughs> my nigga's out here getting it in. He out here with young babies. Yeah, he's catching. Out here catching them young things. Knocking them up. That's the thing. Making some more little tennis players. Man, hell yeah. He got that old school Jim Crow sperm. Nigga, hell yeah. Nigga, the baby gonna come out old. <laughs> Nigga, the baby gonna come out smelling like magic shaving powder. The baby's going to smell old. It ain't going to be baby powder. It's going to be magic shaving powder. The old school kind. The baby's going to be old. <laughs> he has some old babies. <laughs> the baby was born with some work boots on. The baby had a job. The baby had a job at a plant. <laughs> that baby was born with a forklift application. <laughs> Just get to see your supervisor and let him know I'm trying to get some employment. <laughs> this baby was trying to get hooked up with a job when he got born. <laughs> Old baby. <laughs> Shit. All right. Hey, I'm shout out to Mr. Williams. Getting it in. Man. So... But like I said, these these players, these these athletes now, these athletes now, man. But the, the butter biscuits are in the air. The the butter biscuits are in the air. <laughs> it's 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 sad now. They don't want no no. 
They don't want these guys coming from these strong backgrounds. Yeah, they, they don't want that. <laughs> they do not want that. Man, but um, anyway, man, what, what else is going on out here? Um, you know, the COVID thing is still going on out here. The COVID thing is still going on. We got to be very careful about what's going on with that family. A, a, a doctor, a sister who works in the medical field, she emailed me the other day. She was telling me some stuff about what she's been seeing. What she's telling me is that all this stuff that they're putting out in the media, and I got to be very careful here on YouTube because remember, YouTube said if you, if anybody is giving some information that's not substantiated by the World Health Organization, they're going to start trying to ding your pages. So you got to be very careful. We got to be codified. So I'm, I'm just talking facts in history right now. Let's just talk facts. I'm talking about facts and media, what's out there in the media. For all of the YouTube censors, if you're watching, I'm talking media. I'm just relaying media. None of this is my opinion. None of this is my opinion. I'm talking media now because they're censoring you. Now, I talked to a doctor, a person who works in the medical field. Fox, oh yeah, shout out, before I get into that, I, I, we was on Fox Soul the other day. Me and Riza Islam, before I get into the, the COVID stuff, and we were talking about the COVID stuff on Fox Soul. The interview was cool. Um, it was the Mike and Don show. Shout out to Mike Hill. They were very respectful brothers. Let's, let's be clear. The producer, he was a very respectful brother. He's a fan of the show, so he watches my stuff. And I met Mike before. Mike, speaking of ESPN, Mike works, I think he worked at ESPN, Mike Hill. Mike Hill is engaged to, I think he's engaged to Cynthia from the Housewives of Atlanta. So Mike is a very respectful dude. Mike is a cool guy. To me, he's been respectful to me every time I've met him. So, And the, the brothers were respectful on the 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 Fox Soul show. No, what, what, a couple of things bothered me, though. One thing that bothered me, um, one thing that bothered me, um, number one, how they, they worded the show on the, if you look at it on Fox Soul, they say members of the nation of Islam talks about COVID and all this. And I'm, well, I'm not a member of the nation of Islam. RZA is, and they knew I'm not, I, and I, I don't have a problem with the nation of Islam, but don't, I don't want to be put into something that I'm not in. So I like, I like facts. I like facts. I like facts. I don't want to be put into something that I'm not in. I don't like to be put into an organization that I'm not in, you know, because then, you know, later on, if I'm, somebody's asking me or trying to associate me with something that I'm not a part of, I don't want to be held responsible. You, you know what I'm saying? Not, I don't have a problem with them, but I don't want to be, I, I make it a point not to be a part of any type of organization. I don't. I make it a point not to be in any kind of organization. It's not even a so. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't like that at all. Just like they they would try to do. They do that with me all the time. They try to put me in organizations. Which Rick is Black Lives Matter, the leader of Black Lives Matter. No, I'm not. I'm not no goddamn leader of Black Lives Matter. Do not put me in no organization. Do not put me in no organization. I just don't want to be a part or falsely labeled as a part of an organization that I'm not a part of. You dig? So, we're on the show. We're talking about some stuff. And a few times, and the, and the brothers were cool, but when I, when I touched on certain things, I felt the host, the, the brothers, I, I felt some eyes bucking just a little bit. No disrespect to them, but boy, when I was... When I mention a few things, some of the eyes quick, some quick, the eyes buffed a little bit. It was some things I was saying that that it clearly made them uncomfortable. Just a little bit, boy, the eyes bucked just a little bit. Not saying that they went full coon or nothing, but yeah, when I start talking about the white LGBT boy, we can hold on now. The eyes bucked a little bit. Boy, when you start talking about the white LGBT, because 
I look, I'm not afraid to talk about them. I, the white LBGT community, they've done a lot of devious shit to black society. And a lot of black folks who are connected to corporate media, whatever, they get very nervous because they know how the white LGBT people are usually some supervisors there or some higher ups there. So they get niggas get real nervous. They start getting real nervous when you start going in on the white LGBT folks. So, hold, hold on, now, now. homophobia in the black community. You know, hey, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa. Yeah. And, and they, they, they held it together. And did, no disrespect to them. Yeah, and they kept talking about how the black community is homophobic. And I'm shutting that down. We're not playing that lie no more. That's just a complete lie. We're not... Black folks, stop letting people tell that lie about black society. That's just not true, that black people are homophobic. Black folks, we're going to have to stop allowing people to tell that racist fucking lie. Black people are not homophobic in any sense of the word. We don't do anything to harm, hurt, or systematically disenfranchise any gay people whatsoever. Because number one, we don't have the power to. And number two, we've always had gay black people that we don't trip on. All right, there's a gay nigga over there. All right. It's always been around black society. Nobody trips on them. Nobody's doing anything to them. That's a lie. And it's a lie that got started in the 90s. In the early 90s, that's when that lie got started by some of these white LGBT organizations getting their Negro minions to help spread that lie. Start dangling that little non-profit money at their Negro minions to, sp to spread that blacks are homophobic lie. So anytime you start talking about them, th that's why we're doing the movie Buck Breaking, and this is why the movie is so controversial, because we're talking about shit that niggas are scared to talk about, N especially niggas connected in any type of thing in Hollywood, because a lot of white LGBT people, they run shit out there, and a lot of them have the same anti-black views as straight society, and I'm not afraid to say that shit. Fuck any type of white supremacy, if it's coming from a straight person or a gay person. Because when you have situations like what happened with Ed Buck, racist ass white supremacist Ed Buck with a bunch of dead black men coming out of his house, I'm saying something, nigga. I I'm not going to sit her up scared to say something. Fuck that. That's the problem. That's the problem. They try to label us, falsely label us as homophobic so that they can use the civil rights benefits that we fought for against us. Remember, they use the civil rights laws that we don't get protection for. They, nobody's protecting our civil rights. People do anything to us and we don't get protected. But the minute if you get into a fight with a white person, if they say something racist, you slap them, you don't even know what their sexuality is. All they can do is say, hey, he slapped me and I'm gay. Oh, that was a, that was a hate crime. And then you get a federal charge for a hate crime, slapping somebody you, you didn't know what their sexuality was. You then? So when I start talking about that, those brothers, mm, boy, the eyes, there was a, a, a little bucking. And they, they threw out some disclaimers real quick. Um, the views expressed by Tariq are not necessarily the views of Fox Soul. And, oh, they, mm. Boy, the eyes were bucking just a little bit, just a little bit. So they threw out some disclaimers. Oh, 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 Lord. So they had to step away real quick. Yeah. Man. But shout out to them. They were very respectful. This is no disrespect to them. This is no disrespect. Yeah, it was on YouTube, and they took it off YouTube. Yeah, it was on YouTube. It's on the Fox Soul channel. It was on YouTube, and they took it off YouTube. So somebody got scared and took that shit off. Let me tell, let me tell people something. If y'all invite me on your shows, you know how I get down. Let me. I'm telling it, and this is why I really don't like doing interviews. I really don't. They they asked me to do the interview. They asked me a few times. Oh, okay, the producer asked me. Oh, okay, oh, we, we can do that. But family. I really don't like doing interviews. I don't like doing interviews. And if I'm doing an interview for somebody, you know, I, 
y'all know how I get down. Y'all know my I, I I don't pull no surprises out my ass. If you work for a corporation and you know you're scared what the bosses are gonna say, y'all don't invite me on your shows. If you gonna anybody gonna start bucking your eyes when I start talking, y'all don't invite me on these shows, man. I'm I'm getting down. When I do interviews, I'm a, I'm gonna go in and tell the truth. You know, I'm not I'm not gonna be disrespectful, but I'm I'm gonna tell the truth. I'm gonna tell the truth from a historic standpoint. And when I'm telling the truth and going in on white mommy and white daddy, because that's the the aim of my truth is to expose the devious tactics that they do. Yeah, they want to water me down. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm going to tell the truth. Don't start bucking your eyes when I'm going there. Yeah, don't don't buck your eyes when, when I look. A lot of black folks when they get around white people, it's assumed that we're supposed to all get on a code of submission. You understand? When black folks get around white people, it's assumed that we're all supposed to get on the code of submission. Let's talk in code. Let's be on our best behavior as to not offend the white people. No. Nah. No. No, 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 no. If that's what any of y'all want to do, and I'm not talking about anybody in particular, just anybody who works in corporate media, whatever, if, you know, if you can't get down on your job like that, I'm not the person that needs to be on that, that joint if we're talking about things relating to race. Now, we're on there just chopping it up and just about some other bullshit. Yeah, we can do that if it's something lighthearted and we're talking about something else. If, let's say, we're talking about music or whatever, if I'm doing something, we're talking about Mink Slide, yeah, we can, you know, we can kind of fuck around because that's more of a lighthearted thing. We're talking about dating, that's more of a lighthearted thing. But the minute we're going to start talking about conspiracies about, you know, um, um, vaccines and diseases and drugs and systematic racism, I'm going there, okay? If we're talking about that, be prepared for me to go there, all right? When I go there, y'all want to talk real? We're going to get real. I don't fuck around with that. If we're going to talk about that, it ain't going to be a bunch of catchphrases and kumbaya. I'm going there. White mommy and white daddy is going to get offended, and I don't give a shit. Yeah? That's just what it is. Yeah? But again, much respect to them. They were, they were good dudes. No, this is no disrespect to, to Mike and Don at all. They were very respectful, very respectful dudes. But I could see they got a little nervous when we were touching on a few things. I could see they got a little nervous. You understand? I could see they got a little nervous. So... I mean, y'all know how I get down. Y'all know how I get down. Yeah? Yeah, they kept dropping disclaimers. Well, I don't know what he's saying ain't got nothing to do with <laughs> It ain't got nothing to do with us now. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> Man. You know, they had to look up. We's going to get in good trouble. <laughs> and they, but anyway, like I'm saying, like I was saying, family, um, I talked to uh, one of my sisters who um, works in the, in the medical field. Everybody hit that thumbs up button, by the way. Everybody hit that thumbs up button, by the way. Hit that thumbs up button, by the way. All the new people in here, it's 5,000 people in here. For all 5,000 of you, it's 2,000 likes. That means the rest of you need to hit that thumbs up button. All right, all the people that have, have come in, you need to hit that thumbs up button, okay? Um, the sister was telling me that all this stuff about black folks with the preconditions and all this stuff, and this is why we're getting the COVID virus and we're dying from the COVID virus, all that's bullshit. Ain't got nothing to do with no preconditions, family. You know, they, they like to put stuff on us and then blame us for things. It ain't about what we eat and our diets and all that old stuff. Man, look, white people are out here meth the fuck out, opioided out, man-aged out, 
you know, diseased, or they got all types of preconditions. And this sister was breaking it down. She works in the medical field. She's like, man, there's so many sickly white people out here. It's ridiculous. So that whole lie about we got all these preconditions, family, that's a con game. That's a con game. We got certain conditions. Black people are way healthier than white people. Don't let nobody fool you. Black people are generally more healthy than white people. Don't let nobody fool you. Look at all these young warriors out here, these young athletes out here. These very fine sisters out here. They like to make believe that there's a bunch of sickly waddling around black folks. There's older black folks who are sickly. But for the most part, younger black people, younger black people are there, damn near the face of health. White people generally have more genetic diseases, way more. Hey, white people have way more genetic diseases than black people. But see, they have to get in the media and promote this lie that black people, because of our poor health and our poor diets, it's our own fault that we are getting the COVID and well, we just got to step it up, you know, do it for your, 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 your boiler, do it for your pop pop. You dig? And then they get their Sambo minions out here. They get their Sambo minions like Van the Coon Jones. Van Jones, he got slammed for saying black people must change lifestyle choices. I swear, I keep telling y'all about Van the Coon Jones. This nigga is such a fucking tool. I got zero respect for this nigga. When, and I told people, when Van got on TV repeating that black people are homophobic bullshit, I lost all respect for that nigga. So he got on TV talking about, well, black folks need to change their lifestyle choices. This is the white media and the white Democrats pushing this Negro out, giving him his butter biscuits to shit. His whole thing is to shit on black folks for his white paymasters so he can get his little nonprofit money. That's all it is. This nigga has been paid to sell all of us out. This nigga is always doing this type of shit. He's on that we are worst enemy bullshit. He's always gotten kickbacks to throw all of us under the bus while he's living high off the hog. All of these coon niggas are trying to get jobs with all these different campaigns. That's their bread and butter. You understand? Another coon, that Fred T. Joseph nigga. Remember the Elizabeth Warren, this nigga's on the Elizabeth Warren campaign. That was that little moist coon who was going into those fake barbershops. He's having this black outreach and he's going into these fake ass barbershops that barbershops they set up. They got like a little office space and pretended it was a barbershop. That nigga. So he's one of these assholes running around. Black folks got the COVID. Black people disproportionately got the COVID. And then he got some kind of GoFundMe for COVID rent rel relief where he got a bunch of donations from white people. And he's like, yeah, I'm going to give money to random people for COVID rent relief. And remember, this nigga's an immigrant. This Fred T. Joseph is a moist fucking immigrant. He's Cuban and Kenyan. So he's not a foundational black American nowhere. So he's getting all this, this donation money from GoFundMe using us. See, they dangle us. Look at, look at all of us sick black people. We black folks are getting sick, so everybody sends some donations. So they get the donation money and then start giving it to a bunch of white people and Hispanics. I'm looking at who he's giving the money to and this nigga is giving all of these little cash apps, 200 here, 200 there, 50 here, 200 there. He's doing, giving a bunch of money to white and Hispanic people. So, because I know this nigga, he, he can't stand foundational black Americans because he's a little bitch ass immigrant nigga who's a coon. So, that's their hustle. I told people what the hustle was. They're going to dangle black folks. Hey, look at how black folks are suffering. So, let's get a a little GoFundMe so we can give it to minorities, meaning white women, white Hispanics, Asians, and we give all the money to them. They use that niggas. Yeah, we're bait. We're 
have to bait so that they can get resources and then give it to everybody damn else. I, I, I really have zero respect for that bitch nigga. So you got to watch all these niggas connected with the Democrats. They go out of their way to use us as bait to get resources to give to everybody else. That's their little finesse game. Look, remember like a few weeks ago when this shit, when the lockdowns first happened, I gave away like 10 stacks on Twitter. If y'all go back and look at my Twitter, I gave it to all black people, by the way. There were white people asking. I didn't give them shit. Because black people need it. I gave away about 10 stacks. A couple of times I did. I did a couple. I did it one day, then I did another time. I gave five, five away one day, another five another day, just on my own paper. I said, anybody need, like, look, I'm a, who, the first 100 people who hit me up, throw me a cash job, I give everybody 50 bucks. It ain't. And I made sure it was black folks. And also I made a sure it was I made sure it was black folks who looked like they might have needed something. You know, some of y'all niggas that was shining your jewelry blinging and say, hey man, let me get that 50. No, 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 I'm not gonna give it to you, nigga. You shining just a little bit. I'm gonna give it to some people. If they look like they going through some things, you know, if you know, you look like you got kids or something, you know, I I, I throw something at you. A little fifty dollars might, you know, that might go a long way. Now, I gave it to black folks. I made sure to give it to black folks. You know? I made sure to give it to black people. I don't give a fuck. Well, that's discrimination, dude. No, it ain't discrimination because black people are disproportionately affected, so I'm going to help the people who's disproportionately affected first. So get the fuck out of my face. You understand? Leonard, did you get one there? Some of y'all, how many of y'all got it? Because a lot of y'all, my listeners, y'all follow me on Twitter. How many of y'all got, if you got some money for my COVID relief, press one. A lot of y'all, shit, y'all probably in here, y'all got it. Press one if y'all got it. Now don't, don't, don't hit me up tonight. Niggas be like, hey, nigga, um, I heard. No, 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 no. I, gotta, I do it on the random. You know? you know, because see, they try to run that game and they scare niggas. Well, if you're giving the money based on race, that's reverse discrimination. No. No, ma'am. I'm giving it to the people who are affected the most, which are black people. Yeah? So, my, my homegirl was telling me that the reason why there's a lot of black people dying, because now what's happening at these hospitals, these hospitals are, are prioritizing white folks. She, my sister was telling me, the homegirl was saying that there's so many black people around the country who's trying to get to the hospital and they're turning black people away because they're saving these beds for the white people. You understand what I'm saying? They're saving these rooms. Remember, hospitals and emergency rooms, they got limited space. So they're saving and reserving a lot of these emergency room spaces for the white patients to come in. So black people I'm seeing all around the country are going in with symptoms and they're getting turned away now. And they're telling them, well, only come in when you can barely breathe or something. They, you got to be on a damn near dead before they admit a black person now. And there was a brother, was the brother in Michigan somewhere? It was one brother who went to three different hospitals and they kept turning him away and the brother died. This was a couple of days ago. This happened a couple of days ago. This brother went to multiple hospitals that kept turning him away. My own sister in Detroit, they didn't want to take my niece in because she had an abdominal pain. They didn't want to take her in because they were saving these, the, the rooms for white people. You understand? So they're turning away a lot of black folks now because they're keeping the rooms and all of the shit available for all them white folks. You know? So this thing is heavy, but when we talk about medical apartheid, we're not far off with this thing. These people have been practicing, listen family, these people show racial preferential treatment with everything else, with jobs, with the way they enforce the law in the court system, 
in the education system, do you not think they're not going to practice the same racial preferential treatment in the medical system? It's worse than the medical system. And let me tell you something, family. Black folks, we should have a distrust for certain people in the medical industry because they have a track record of doing devious things to black people and non-white people under the guise of helping us. You understand? When they start talking about how much they want to help us in the medical field, you won't help us get an education. We ask for reparations, you won't give us that. But all of a sudden, hey, let us help you with these vaccines. Let us help you in the medical industry. And we're supposed to say, okay, yeah, you, you're trustworthy. Last time we did that, we got Tuskegee. But family, look at the history of these white supremacists. There was a doctor back in the 1930s named Dr. Cornelius Rhodes. He was from America. This was in the 1930s. Dr. Cornelius Rhodes. Let me show y'all a picture of Dr. Cornelius Rhodes. This is him. This is Dr. Cornelius Rhodes. All right. This is one article you can find, the horrifying letter in which the scientists confessed to murder. But this is... This is um, Cornelius P. Rhodes, this white supremacist doctor who the Rockefellers, and I want y'all to, this is, I'm just talking facts and history. So YouTube censors, we're talking facts and history right now. Dr. Rhodes, no, this is, you're thinking of Cecil Rhodes. Cecil Rhodes created the Rhodes Scholar thing. That's another white supremacist. But this is Cornelius Rhodes. This is another one. He worked with the Rockefellers. The Rockefeller had like a foundation to find cures for cancer. And remember, a few weeks ago, I showed you guys a picture with Bill Gates' dad, with Fauci, with David Rockefeller, all of them all together. All of these people all together in a room at this meeting, at this, at, at this event in New York. So they're all clicked in, by the way. So Rockefeller, the Rockefeller Foundation, sent this guy over to Puerto Rico. Understand this. A lot of black folks, a lot of black Puerto Ricans in Puerto Rico, especially in the 1930s, a lot of black Puerto Ricans over there. Do y'all understand that? People tend to forget that Puerto Rico was a slave colony. See, they do a lot of these experiments on these islands. Go look at old pictures of Puerto Rico. Folks are jet black over there. They, in, they kind of, kind of recently lightened up in Puerto Rico within the last what 70, 80 years, something like that. All the the light J Lo looking Puerto Ricans. No, 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 no. Go look at old pictures of Puerto Rico. It looked like damn near Haiti. Okay. Let's be very clear. And Cuba too, by the way. But. They sent him over to Puerto Rico to do some experiments and treatment for cancer because this is cancer and the discovery of cancer and cancer treatment. That was a kind of a new thing. So they, they sent this guy over there and he was over there killing people. He was over there injecting people with cancer. He was supposed to go help the folks, but he was over there giving people cancer. One night he got drunk and he wrote a letter confessing to what he was doing, talking about the Puerto Ricans are a dirty race and I deliberately infected them with some of my patients with cancer. I deliberately killed a number of my patients. He admitted to this shit. He wrote a letter admitting to killing people when he was drunk. So now this letter circulated. There was a big controversy about it. He had to escape Puerto Rico and come back to the U.S., and the media cake for him. His excuse was, well, I wrote the letter as satire. The letter was actually a parody. I just wrote it as a joke. See, the white supremacists always try to flip their shit and say, well, I'm just joking. And the white media gave him a pass, and he never got punished for that. Look him up. He got drunk and just started spilling the beans and... Like, nigga, this is your letter. It, what, you can't deny that you just admitted to murder. Oh, no, 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 no. I was just joking at the time. 
You know, it's always a joke. They always try to portray their bullshit as jokes, and they're dumb, and they don't know. What? I, I, I don't know. I was just joking. I wouldn't do anything like that. A tattoo of a, a white supremacist group, I don't know how that got there. I, I must have been asleep. Yeah? So this guy confessed to it. But we should have a distrust about a lot of stuff that the media is telling us and some of these so-called health organizations that's supposed to be looking out for our best interest. Especially with this COVID thing. Like, and, and, and YouTube was talking about, well, if you say that there's natural cures, if you say that vitamin C can cure the COVID, well, we're going to take your page down and all this stuff. But family, recently, let, let me, let me, Google this shit. Let me, let me bring some receipts just in case the YouTube censors are watching. Let me, let me bring some receipts. Hold on. Okay, let me just, let me just throw some, some receipts out here. Just let me throw some receipts out here just in case the censors are watching. Just in case the censors are watching here, over in Madagascar, the president of Madagascar, which is not too far from Africa, is not too far from Africa. Madagascar is not too, too far from Africa. But the president over there, he came out and said that there's a natural herb that they got over from Africa Hold on. And yeah, let me show y'all this. this I'm, I'm just reading YouTube censors. I'm just reading the news here. Madagascar distributes controversial miracle cure. Right, this is just the news now. This is France 24. A lot of these, the international press is reporting on this, but they're not reporting on this in the American press, by the way. We look at how Madagascar president has endorsed the controversial miracle cure to tackle the coronavirus. So we see all these black folks out here. So the president of um, Madagascar was saying that, hey, there's a, a, an herbal elixir that we got from over in Africa that's actually curing folks. This is what he said, YouTube. YouTube, I'm just repeating what the media said the president said over there. Okay? This is what the, the president said over there. The president said this. Let me let me find some other stuff over here. I want to bring all the receipts so that they don't try to say that I'm spread misinformation. I'm just reading the news here. Hold on. I'm gonna bring all the receipts here just in case anybody got any questions. Where we at? Where we at? Where we at? Okay, so this is him right here. Okay. This is another article. I'm showing y'all different articles from different sources. This is actually the president of Madagascar drinking it. This is the president, Andre, Andre Rohalina. I think that's his name. So he's drinking this herbal remedy for corona that they got from Africa. Yeah? So we got to understand, one of the, the ingredients is something called Apivarine, I think that's the name of it. There's Ar Artemisia. There's a couple of herbs over there. Artemisia. Okay. So a lot of people are using holistic remedies. Okay. Now, of course, the World Health Organization is not going to want anybody to promote herbal remedies. They're not going to make any money. This is why they always got people out here trying to discredit Dr. Sebi that Kismikia woman who works with Fauci, she was out here trying to discredit Dr. Sebi. She had some tweets talking about Dr. Sebi ain't even no doctor. Why are people listening to Dr. Sebi? Bill Gates ain't no goddamn doctor. And we're supposed to listen to him. Bill Gates is not a doctor. You understand? So, they got herbal remedies that that's being reported. 
I'm, I'm wording my, using my words very carefully here, there are reports that herbal remedies over there are knocking that stuff out. That's why in many African countries, the, 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 the rates of it is so low. There's another doctor out in um, Benin. Let me, let, me, let me show you some receipts here. This is another doctor. Hold on. This is a doctor over in West Africa, Dr. Valentin Agon. So this guy has something called Apiv, was a apir, a apivirine, apivirine, apivirine. I think that's how you pronounce it. Apivirine. That's something that he came up with, and they were using it for HIV healing people over there, and they were using it the, uh, allegedly. I'm going to say allegedly so that YouTube don't ding my page, but this brother was saying that they were curing COVID. They cured a dozen or so people of COVID with this apivirine elixir that he came up with. This is Dr. Valentina Gon. And most articles about this guy is in French. Most articles about this brother is in French, so you can Google him for yourself. And the, the World Health Organization, I looked at their website, and they were trying to discredit apivirine. They were like, oh, that's not working. That don't work. That's not, that's not been formulated. It's not been tested. You understand? So they've been trying to, you know, discredit that elixir. Because again, this dude is gonna fuck their money up. That's gonna mess their money up. When you have somebody saying, hey, wait a minute, we don't need to get all these crazy vaccines. Look, we, we got this over here that we got from the tree, we got this, and this is gonna help people. Oh no, nigga, you about to fuck up these trillions of dollars we about to get. Because remember, Bill Gates is already saying, hey, look, he's on, Bill Gates is running around the news now. They're like, well, Bill, what are we going to do? How can we fix all this? Hey, you know, everybody's going to have to get those vaccines if we don't want this COVID to come. And it's going to come back now. We're going to get the COVID back. But if y'all get my vaccines, I already got the scientists. I got the labs. I got everything. I'm, I'm the plug. I'm the plug. So if y'all just... Y'all need me. So yeah, let's go ahead and make me the leader of the medical field. See, this is the global takeover, family. Let me, let me be careful with my words so I don't get my, my, my shit flagged. Because if you say something about Bill Gates, you know, they're flagging niggas. Yeah? So let's talk in a hypothetical sense. Let's say... I'm an evil scientist. Well, hell, let's say I'm not even a scientist. I'm an evil businessman. We're talking hypothetical. And let's say I'm an evil white supremacist businessman. Not talking about anybody in particular. I'm talking about a possible movie plot. So all the YouTube censors, I'm not talking about the World Health Organization in particular, I'm not talking about Bill Gates, I'm talking about a hypothetical situation. Now let's say I do a movie about an evil businessman named Phil Cates. And Phil Cates said, look, I want to get rid of half the niggas on the planet. And Phil Cates got billions of dollars. And he wants to get rid of half the niggas on the planet. So what Bill Cates does is say, wait a minute, I don't want to become president because my powers as president is limited. I got limited powers as a president. My powers only go as far as the country I'm the president of. So what other model can I use to take over the planet, really take over the planet. Well, what I can do, let me study some organizations that are neutral, who have access to all the countries. Who has that? The Red Cross. When you look at the Red Cross, understand, whenever you see a war, what do you see? You see a Red Cross truck. The Red Cross is a neutral organization that has access to every place on the planet except North Sentinel Island. But they can go anywhere. The Red Cross can go anywhere under the guise, hey, we're a neutral organization. 
we're bipartisan, we're, we're nonpartisan, we're non-religious, we're there for medical help, and medical help is universal. So this is why anytime there's a war, the Red Cross trucks will be in every country that has the war. Y'all got to understand how the Red Cross has been able to do a lot of devious shit because they are supposed to be a neutral organization. We've heard about some of the slick shit the Red Cross would do in Haiti. You understand? You know, they're like missionary colonizers at the same time. They're based out of Switzerland. Switzerland is a neutral country. But this is why a lot of wars and shit are orchestrated in Switzerland first. They sit up and plan and plot this shit in Switzerland, and it's distributed all around the world. But that's a whole different thing. So now, studying that model... The Red Cross, they're able to go anywhere. Their powers are unlimited as far as access to different countries. So let's step that up. Let's use that Red Cross model. So I'm an evil doctor, Dr. Phil Cates. So let's use all this money I got to fund the world wealth organization, let's just change the names here, They'll, we'll fund this organization that's supposed to be about medical help, an, another so-called neutral organization that's supposed to help people based on medicine. See, that's the con they learn. We can colonize, not going in there on a religious tip, we go in there on a major mass medical tip. We're going to help everybody. All these diseases that we help create, we're going to, hear, we're going to go in here and help these people. So now when these sicknesses pop up and there's so many questions about these sicknesses, now let's say in my movie script, let's say this doctor, this evil doctor or this evil businessman, he got a couple of his bought and paid for scientists and they went and put a disease or helped fund a disease to come out of China. And this disease spread around the world and then they turned around and said, oh my God, Look at this disease. We need to help cure this disease that we started. Oops, or allegedly started. And everybody has to get my vaccine. Everybody on the planet, all over the world, you got to get my vaccine. I can go into any country with this vaccine and no telling what's in it. That means if I get everybody hooked on my vaccine that I own the patents for. I own the patents, I own the factories, I own everything about these vaccines and everybody has to get them. I'm running shit. And I can control the planet. I, if I can control your health, I can control everything else. If I can inject something in you, I can control everything else. I can choose I'm an evil doctor. This is a movie script now we're talking. Let's say I'm an evil doctor. I'm a, this is a movie script. I'm not, this is a movie script. So in the movie script I do, the evil businessman says, hey, let me put something in this vaccine. Let me put some tracking chips in there. While I'm vaccinating, giving people vaccines, and I'm vaccinating people, let me put a little mini tracker in there because I know about computers and internet and all that stuff. Let me put a little something in there where I can track everybody. We can keep tabs on everybody. And this little tracker device in their bodies, if I want to get rid of a certain race of people, I can just type in some stuff, push a button, and everybody drops dead over in that side of the world. Wouldn't that be a good movie script? Somebody can, they inject somebody with something. This is a movie, I'm just... I'm just, I'm just kind of running it through my mind. The evil businessman injects people with a chip or a tracker, and they can push a button and kill millions of people by the push of a button. You understand? So YouTube, I'm not talking about anybody in particular. I'm, I'm talking about a movie script here. I'm talking about a movie script. Yeah. So we got to be very careful with this stuff. Your life imitates art. You understand? So we got to understand how devious these white supremacists are. 
we got to understand how devious they are. We got to look, family. We got to really get on code. Because, see, the thing is, a lot of times what we do, black folks, what we got to stop doing when we see these people plotting and planning, what we start doing, we start, we, we got a very bad habit of engaging in catchphrases. We engage in a lot of catchphrases that don't mean anything. And that's something we're going to have to stop. See, we start saying shit, well, black folks, what we need to do, we all got to come together. That's all. Everybody against us, black folks going to have to come together. Come together and do what? Like Neely Fuller keeps saying, black folks talk about coming together, but come together and do what? What exactly are we going to do when we come together? See, that's just a, an empty catchphrase. That means nothing. Family, stop getting into catchphrases. When well, we got a new meta, stop getting into catchphrases. What do we need to come together for? Family, we're already together. Black folks, listen to me. We're already together. We're together in our subjugation. Come together and do what? That's a cop-out. Saying we need to come together is a cop-out. And we say it all the time. Black people, we're already together. The problem is, that's our problem right there. We're already together. And that's the problem. Let me say it again. We're already together, but that's the problem. The problem is, we're already together. Let me explain what that means. Black people get together all the time. We get together in large groups at church. We're together at church. I've been watching videos of black folks at house parties in the last couple of days now that they lifted the COVID. Not In certain cities, they didn't even lift the, the COVID stay-at-home order. I know they did in Atlanta, but in Chicago, there was a house party. It looked like with a 1,000 people in there. Black people were together there. Down in Atlanta, black folks get together and go to the strip club. We go to the clubs, we go to the parties, we're together all the damn time. We get together to watch the Super Bowl fight. We get together to smoke and drink. We get together, all, we're together in jail. We're in jail together, literally on top of each other. We're together in housing projects, literally on top of each other. We're together at the mall. We're together at the club. We're together at the skating rinks. We're together all the time. But we come together and we don't have a code to do anything constructive. We come together with no code. We come together without an agenda. And that's the problem. This is why a lot of times when we get together, we start fighting. When we get together, there is hostility because there is nothing constructive. Everything is idle. We get together and eat crab legs and just do nigga shit, but we get together and there is an idleness there. There is literally no agenda. We just standing around smoking and drinking. And as they say, an idle mind is the devil's workshop. When you get together with no agenda, it's always going to turn negative. It's too easy for negativity to come in there. Because there is no focus on anything constructive. And by nature, people want to focus on something. And if you're not focusing on something positive, but you're naturally going to focus on something negative and non-constructive. So the minute something pop off, everybody's ready to do something negative. You dig? We got to have an agenda if we get together. And once we have an agenda and a code, we don't need to physically get together no more. We're all on the same page. We don't have to be in a room physically in a room together. 
just together not doing anything. No. There has to be an agenda there. Yeah? So when we get together, we have to say, how are we going to empower each other? How are we going to protect each other from systematic white supremacy? How important is freedom to ourselves? See, this is another thing. We got to understand how, how important freedom is. See, I've been seeing a lot of white people walk around with signs saying, give me freedom or give me death. And white people mean that. White people mean that. White people, when a white woman got arrested last week for playing at a park, white people went to the police officer's house who arrested her. White people went to his house. White people believe in freedom or death. We're not going to be treated like niggas. That's what niggas are for. They're supposed to be abused. We're willing to put our lives on the line before we, are let, before we let the system abuse us. You know, we, we get harmed and we start marching and praying and begging for somebody to bring justice. Nobody's going to bring justice. I saw a story where it was a brother somewhere down in Georgia somewhere where he was jogging and some white people, a white man and his son, went and got their gun and they ran after this brother, cornered him and executed him. And this was an off-duty white cop who did this. He was off-duty. The brother was jogging and they killed this brother down south somewhere. And the family's all on the internet crying, oh my God, we got to get justice. He was just running and jogging. They didn't have to do that and nobody's punishing them. That's because we're in a system of white supremacy, family. Family, when you go out of your house, black people, you better expect to be killed by a race soldier because you're in a war. When you go out of your house, don't be shocked if somebody, a white supremacist, tries to kill you. Don't be shocked. You better prepare yourself mentally for that. That's your reality. We don't like to admit that. We don't like to admit that these white supremacists have us captive globally. And when we walk out of our houses, we could potentially be killed. We could be a hashtag that afternoon. When you walk out of your house, you need to think like that every single day. When I leave my house, I think that every day. This could be it right here. So you live your life to the fullest. And you protect yourself as much as you can. But in the system of white supremacy, understand, when I walk out that house, me and my kids can get got by these race soldiers at any given moment. This is why every day I'm working against the system of white supremacy. I don't take breaks. See, a lot of cool niggas out here, oh, all that white supremacy talk, why are you talking all that, man? Everything ain't about race now. See, that's a nigga who wants to live in denial. That's a nigga who wants to live in denial until a race soldier get at him. Until a race soldier gets at him. You understand? See, black folks, you're going to have to learn to think and handle business like white people. If you want to stop tyranny, act like white Americans. That's how you stop tyranny, folks. You have to conduct yourself and act like they act. I commend them. That's one thing I can give a lot of white Americans. I commend them for not allowing themselves to be abused. Be more like them as far as that's concerned. You understand? I saw this Facebook post by a suspected white supremacist. He used a lot of coded language here. I want y'all to see this. He said, all right, guys, we need to come up with a plan. Just in case, I need to know who's in my group. In a case of a zombie apocalypse or a tyrannical government takeover, whose house are we meeting at? Who's bringing guns? Who's on snack duty rations? Who's driving? Where are we going? We leaving a bunkering down. We got to vote for a leader or council. We can do training on the weekends, get our plan together. 
run some drills. It's time to get organized. If Facebook deletes this, y'all know what's up. I respect this. Even though it's coded racism, I respect it. That's coded racism. Zombie is black folks. They've always used black people and zombie synonymously. Zombie has always been a code word for black people. That's coded language. Zombie apocalypse. That means just in case these black folks rise up. I was talking to people the other day. Go watch the movie 1804. Okay? Watch my film 1804. We talked about zombies, the concept of zombies that came from the Haitian Revolution family. Do y'all understand that? How many of you have not seen 1804? The concept that these white supremacists use about zombies came from the Haitian Revolution. It came from the Haitian Revolution and voodoo. In the early movies in America, when they would do zombie movies, almost every movie, the zombies were Haitian. When they would do all the early zombie movies in Hollywood, the zombies would be Haitian. Then they would make some of them African, but they were always black. The zombies were, and zombie, zombie comes from zombie, which is an African word, but they would always make the zombies Haitian. And in these zombie movies back in the early 1930s, and go look them up we, and go watch 1804. Really go watch that movie. The zombies would always come up because some white person went over there and um, struck up some voodoo somewhere. They would, it would be voodoo, then the niggas rose up and start killing white people. That's what the early zombie movies were. It was all about voodoo, Negroes turning into zombies and killing white people. That was the Haitian Revolution family. And look at all the zomb the early zombie movies. When they talk about voodoo and zombies, they would always have some of the voodoo um, um, deities like Papa Legba. They still have the Papa Legba image, all that stuff. Baron Sabetti. As a matter of fact, the Joker character from Batman is based on the Baron Sabetti, the same purple outfit with the face paint. Look at up, look up all this stuff. So, and, and shout. This is. Shout out to Ogun. This is Ogun. This is the Ogun speaking of, you know, the those Vodun deities. This is Ogun, one of the most feared. You dig? That's why Marvel Comics, they study this shit, by the way. They study this shit. But the fact that the Haitians study that, how, how, why was that revolution so successful? See, the, the movie 1804 is a great study in military science. It's not only a great historical piece, it's a great movie about military science. Okay? Because what did the Haitians do? You, you learn about warfare. That, yeah, the Baron Samedi, yes. The Baron Samedi. Look up the Baron Samedi and the Joker. The Joker is based on the Baron Samedi. Look that up. Look up the Joker and look up the Baron Samedi. They got the purple outfits. Look that up. The Baron Samedi. I what did I say? I, I think I mispronounced it. It's the Baron Samedi. But why was the Haitian Revolution so successful? What did they do? Number one, they decided that death would be better than living a life of indefinite torture. They decided that it's better to risk your lives than to live in infinite torture. And then what they did, they said, okay, we need to get rid of the white God meaning Jesus, the white God that we've been worshiping. These French people have taught us to worship a white God. These French people have taught us to worship a white God. So what they started to do, they started to slowly get an agenda. You understand? See, they like black folks being together bullshitting. 
They like black folks being together, playing and partying and singing and dancing. But what they would do, they got together and they got an agenda. They said, look, reject that white God. This white God ain't working for us no more. This is Bookman. They got Bookman out of Jamaica and brought him over to Haiti. Bookman had the infamous Bookman's Prayer. Yeah? And Bookman's prayer was, let me, let me read some of that. Let me read some of Bookman's prayer. It's a beautiful prayer, beautiful piece. If this page can open it up real quick, let me read that prayer. A beautiful piece. Hold on one second. The prayer says, the gods who created the earth who created the sun that gives us light, the God who holds up the ocean and make the thunder roar, our God who has ears to hear, you are hidden in the clouds, who watches us from where you are, who see all that the white man has made us suffer. The white man's God asks him to commit crimes, but the God within us wants want us to do good. Our God who is so good, so just, he orders us to revenge our wrong. It is he who will direct our arms and bring us the victory. It is he who will assist us. We all should throw away the image of the white man's God who is so pitiless. Listen to the voice of liberty that speaks in our hearts. Gangster fucking ass prayer. That's some gangster shit right there. You understand? Do y'all understand how gangster that prayer is? That's a gangster prayer. They got together and instilled that prayer in the minds of enough people. See, they had to speak it and they had to make their revolution and their freedom a spiritual journey. See, if you're worshiping white daddy and white Jesus, subconsciously, you're going to protect white daddy. This is why anytime somebody go after white people, what do niggas do? Oh, Lord, Lord, don't do that to him now. Leave him alone. The minute a black person about to, about to check somebody, all of a sudden, the coon train starts a chugging along. White daddy is on your mind. Hold on. Every time, every single time we start trying to go up against these white supremacists and check them, what do we get? This is what we get. We get this right here. Hold on. This is what we get. Hold on. We get this right here. Every time we about to go in on the white supremacists. There's a mammy or a coon right there. Lord Jesus, with your mouth wide open crying. Lord, he's still a human being. You understand? The eyes get the bucking. Look at this. Look at this picture. A lot of y'all. <laughs> this is a picture. I remember this picture from Jet Magazine. This is a picture from, uh, I think it was from Jet Magazine, Ebony Magazine from back in the day. Hold on. Hold on. Where's this picture? Hold on one second. Hold on one second. Hold on. Hold on. Well, I can't find a picture now. Shit, I can't find it. I want to show you all another picture. Ah, okay. I want, there's another picture I wanted to find. Hold on. I can't find the picture now, but yeah, every time you want to go in on some white supremacists, niggas start bucking their eyes, but look, the, as far as the Haitian Revolution, the first thing Bookman understood, you got to get the white God out of your mind, because if, if God is white in your mind, you're not going to battle God in your mind. If God is white, and you see all white people as God, you're going to protect that. And you're going to believe that it's God's will for you to be subjugated. 
So that was the first thing. They was like, we got to get this white God out of our damn mind, number one, and realize how devious this motherfucker is. The white supremacists, they are not our gods. Let's get them out your mind. God wants us to rise up against that. God wants us to get revenge. See, the white supremacists knew with black folks, you got to keep preaching forgiveness. You keep preaching certain parts in the Bible, which was about forgive your, your abusers. Jesus would forgive. And they said, no, 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 no. We got to call up some of these old voodoo spirits. So they went into a swamp together. They went into the Bois Cayman Swamp up there in Haiti. They went, the Bois Cayman, that literally means alligator swamp. Cayman means alligator in, in French Creole. So they went to an alligator swamp. You know how gangster you gotta be to go into an alligator swamp and have a meeting and a ceremony. And the alligators didn't fuck with them either. You understand? It did start with Mackendall first. It did start with Mackendall. Let's go back. Mackendall, he kind of set it off first. It was a brother, Francois Mackendall. We discussed this in the movie 1804. With Mackendall, Mackendall was a war veteran, allegedly. There are reports, and from my studies, there are some suggestions that he came from the Angola region. And this is why the white supremacists had to learn where to get certain people enslaved, where to get them from, because they started getting certain black folks from certain places, and you got the wrong nigga. You went and got, like, war criminals and... Even though that one particular brother might have gotten captured, that motherfucker's a veteran. So you took him and you didn't, this was a first generation slave. It was a, it was a direct slave. He wasn't a, a first or second generation. So you're getting a person who you got from another place who's a veteran, who was fighting civil wars in his own country. You don't know what kind of skills this cat has. See, they learned that the hard way in Brazil. Brazil... The Portuguese, they went over there to Angola. And, you know, there were civil wars going on all around Africa. So you had what we, we forget that what we know as martial arts, that started in Africa, by the way, guys. You know that. Um, as we're crazy, a crazy, he calls it the Montu arts. We're talking, let's talk history. We talked about this in Hidden Colors 5. In Hidden Colors 5, you can look at the walls in Egypt. You see black folks practicing what would later be called martial arts. The shit looked like Tai Chi and Kung Fu. You can see this on the walls in Africa where we were practicing the martial arts. When the Greeks and the, the Romans and all these people, when the Greeks saw this, they attributed, they start putting their own shit to it, named it after their god Mars, and started calling it martial. That's where the term martial art comes from. The, the, the Greeks would see all this shit on the walls and then kind of put their shit on it. You understand? But martial arts, or the Montu arts, was basically black people studying animals. They would get fighting styles from animals. Kunene Ngolo, right. Kunene Ngolo, which would later be capoeira. Kunene Ungogo, Ngolo, I'm, I'm getting some of these names a little afflicted. Over there in that Angola region, they would study zebras. Now understand, zebras can fight like a motherfucker. See, that's where martial arts came from, studying animals. That's why, you know, they named shit after dragons and the tiger and all that old stuff. But it, it came from studying animals. Somebody said that was the Chinese. No, it wasn't Kung Fu. Oh, yeah, but you're trolling, you're trolling. We brought that shit over there to them. But they would study these animals, study these zebras. Zebras can fight their asses off. Nigga, go look at some shit on YouTube where you see a zebra kick the fuck out of a lion. The only zebras that they can really catch are like a baby one. You got They got to catch a, a zebra when that motherfucker is either old or first, first born. But a healthy zebra in his prime be kicking the shit out them lions. That's why you can't really tame a zebra. 
it's very rare to tame a zebra. You know? Yeah, praying mantis, monkeys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We would study these animals. So in Angola, they had all these fighting styles, which would later become capoeira. But this was the OG shit. So when the Portuguese went over there, they got a brother named Zumbi. He was in. He was captured, and they took him over to Brazil. And the minute Zumbi got off that damn boat, him and his other warriors started whooping the shit out of those Portuguese. They kicked their asses, and then he ran up in the mountains. He, he formed a maroon colony, a brother named Zumbi, down there in Brazil. And that's how the capoeira started to get passed down. They, they had to ban it. So what they would do in slavery, because they banned capoeira, because that shit, when you use capoeira on a nigga, you don't know what the fuck hit your ass. There's a nigga run up on you, you try to shoot him or you try to stab him and this nigga do a flip and roll on the ground and kick you in your fucking throat. It's a wrap. So you don't know whether, if you look at those dudes who do capoeira now, look at how ripped they are. Go look at capoeira videos. The niggas is ripped doing that shit. That shit got your whole body ripped to do that type of shit. And you don't know how to defend yourself from it. How are you going to defend yourself from a nigga who jumped up and then went under your ass? <laughs> you, you dig? So what they would do, because they banned that shit, they were like, oh, we can't have you. If we see y'all niggas practicing or teaching that shit, it's a wrap. So what they would do, they started to put the dance to it. They disguised it as dancing. So the capoeira we see now is watered down. They mixed that dancing with it later to hide it. So when they saw a bunch of niggas practicing, hey, what y'all niggas doing? Oh, this is a new dance. Oh, what's that called? Oh, it's called the whip. Because <laughs> when I unleash it, I'm whipping your ass. So yeah, brothers would be practicing and, and like playing the drums with it. You know, they would have cats on the side playing the drums, which is the tradition they have today. They're sitting around playing the drums, but that was something to water it down. But the initial in Gogo Kunene, it, it wasn't the drums and all that dancing. It was just a motherfucker just run up, jump up, flip up, and kick you all up in your ass. And that was it. You didn't know what happened to you. So again, they were getting some of these guys out of Angola, taking them over there to Haiti. And you had um, Mackendall. And Mackendall was one of the first ones who said, okay, we're going to have to get this shit popping and get rid of these damn these white supremacists, we're going to have to off them. And somebody said, you know, how are we going to do that? He said, first of all, we're going to get this poison. We talk about this in 1804. Y'all need to go to 1804movie.com. We reenact all this stuff. So, because they, warfare is not just about, you know, you know, fighting with your fists. That's one facet of it. But you got to, they understood biological warfare. You see, we're going into all aspects of it. This is why you have to study that movie. The Haitians understood spiritual warfare, military warfare, biological warfare. Remember, they had to get spiritual warfare when they had that voodoo ceremony. When Mackendall was getting that poison ready, that was bio, bio warfare. Getting po he knew, this brother knew what, what herbs and leaves and plants to use to mix together and put in the food of these white supremacists and kill them. So while Mackendall was making this his poison elixir, you know, some of the other enslaved brothers and sisters said, hey, brother, you know, we, I know we're about to kill these French folks, but what about the, the coons? Because these coons are a problem. And Mackendall said, well, nigga, who do you think this first batch is for? Nigga, this first batch got coon written on it. That's who this one's for. First, we killing some coons first. Just to let folks know we ain't bullshitting. See, understand warfare. They, they don't have that, they didn't have the mentality, we all got to get together with it. Fuck all that. See, we got that mentality where we got people working against us we got niggas who are clearly working with the white supremacists, and we got we still got niggas talking about, well, he's still our brother. That's still, he's still black. 
that's our bro. We still need to get together. Now, hear him out now. Where the fuck did that stupid ass mentality came from? Where niggas working against us and we still got to sit up and cape for him? No. No. Get out of here with that bullshit. We still got that mentality. There was some mammy bed wench trying to argue with me on Twitter because we were clowning um, Lori Lightfoot. There was an old picture of her looking like kid from Kid and Play. And people were clowning her picture because, you know, Lori Lightfoot is an enemy of black society. So some mammy with a foreign flag, look at how y'all black men be talking about black women. Y'all disrespect black women. I said, woman, you are not even a part of our culture fully. Don't you speak on us. No, my, my grandma is a descendant of slave. My daddy Nigerian. So I'm a foundational black American too. No, you're not. You're one of these anchored niggas. We went in on her ass. You're one of these anchored niggas. Your dad was probably a coon. They send these coons over here to anchor themselves and, and work against us and have their offspring work against us. Their, their offspring try to latch on to our heritage while hold on to another heritage that is anti-foundational. Yeah? And the fact that you're caping for a lower light but shows that you are an anti-foundational black American. You're caping for somebody who's working against black society. You dig? We got to watch that shit. Watch out for certain, these anchor baby niggas. I, oh, I, I got heat for you anchor babies. No, my grandma, my mom, yeah, my dad from Ghana, but my grandma from Mississippi. So I'm a foundational black American too, but you're not a rep. You can't represent black Americans because you have dual allegiance. So you are not a good representative of black America. So I don't even want your opinion. I don't want nobody's opinion that's negative about foundational black Americans. If you are an anchor baby from another place that you're not criticizing, you're not talking about Boko Haram and all the damn female genital circumcision that's going on in your daddy's country. So don't come over here saying shit because y'all always got all the smoke for us, but never about your dad's side. See, that's another trick that people have run on us. What they do, they come to black society, black Americans and dump garbage on us but keep the image of their other side very clean. They keep that image squeaky clean so they can jump in between cultures. So you bring all the good and portray all the good from that side, but get over to us and everything is all garbage and filth and you're throwing bullshit criticisms at us, being a tether. You did Because these people would like to see us wiped out so they can take over. So they can step in our places like, like the movie Us. They would love to see us destroyed. They, that's why they like the Lori Lightfoots and all these people who shit on black society and disenfranchise us so they can start getting some of them immigrant packages. See, they, pl they play both sides of the fence. While we're getting shitted on and they got some little immigrant stimulus package going, they're up here with the Latinos talking about, hey, we black and brown. That's who the black and brown is right there. Some of them immigrants and Latinos. Because they like, if I connect with this Latino, I can, I can get some of the crumbs off those immigrant benefits because I'm part immigrant too. See, we got to watch that game these niggas play. Yeah? We got to watch that game. And another thing, I've been seeing a lot of these Foreign flag mammies and bed wenches on some K-pop shit. They were caping for the K-pop. These Korean boys, some shit. I don't know what this K- This K-pop is some Korean dudes or whatever. And a lot of these foreign flag mammies and bed wenches are caping for these cats. So while over in Asia, African people are getting their asses kicked in, you got these mammies from the Caribbean and Africa over here kissing these Asians' asses. They can't wait to have an... They'll replace a white daddy for an Asian daddy. They can't wait to get them another non-black zaddy somewhere. You dig? They can't wait. Yeah? So we got to watch that. Some of these men, some of the, these other places got a lot of coons 
and tethers that they're sending over here. We got to be very careful. We got to watch out for them. There was one chick from somewhere in the Caribbean. I don't know where she was from, but she made a tweet that was so damn stupid. She was talking about, and she deleted that shit. She was like, yeah, black Americans and Caribbeans are different. Caribbeans, we're taught about manners and respect, how to respect people and show manners to people at a young age. Black Americans, not so much. And then there was another, a bunch of other little immigrant coons co-signing it, talking about how disrespectful black Americans are as opposed to Caribbeans. And we kind of reminded them, I'm like, wait a minute. Have y'all been in a Caribbean restaurant lately? Respect and manners? Nigga, y'all act like we haven't been in a Caribbean restaurant before. That's the epitome of bad manners and lack of respect. What are you talking about? Manners and respect? Nigga, you go into a Jamaican restaurant and get cursed out just for ordering too slow. I'm like, uh, what you want? Bumba clot. Shit. I like um, some oxtails. We don't have it. Oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> um, can I get festival bread? No, you can't. Okay, where's all these manners y'all talking about? Where's the manners and respect? Be cussing your ass out at Jamaican restaurants. Now, the one I go to now, they're real cool because they're new. They're real cool. But generally, Jamaican restaurants have the worst fucking attitudes ever. They're the worst manners ever. What are you talking about? Man. So where you get that bullshit? Yeah, and that's the ironic thing. The worse the manners are, the better the food is. Fucked up manners is the secret ingredients. <laughs> that's the secret ingredients. For when you go in there and somebody cuts your ass out, oh, that food is about to be the bomb. You know? So, but like I said, getting back to the Haitian Revolution, we're talking about the Haitian Revolution. It's why y'all got to study the movie 1804. So Mackendall, he started it off by killing the white supremacists with poison. He started to poison their asses. And when Bookman, some years later, about 10 years later, I believe, when Bookman, and others had that Wakaman ceremony, had that voodoo ceremony. They started calling up some of those African deities. They started calling up this mother, Ogun, the god of war, the god of iron, the god of the god of vengeance. You see here, this is a, this is a god with a sword. They start calling up Ogun. You know, they made it a spiritual thing. You understand? And they they understood. Whatever you have in your spirit, everything, because the spirit is in your heart. The spirit is in your heart. That's why the white supremacists like to get you with religion first. The first thing they hit niggas with is religion. They go in there, they send the missionaries in to get white supremacy in your heart. This is how they get, this is why so many African mammies and Caribbean mammies are fucked up now. Because what do they do? Over there now, let's be real, in parts of Africa and the Caribbean, when the white supremacists, when they economically create deprivation, you got a lot of black folks here, they don't know. All they see is other black people. When they see other black people, they blackness, poverty. When a white person shows up, usually a missionary, what do they see? A, a white person, angelic looking, with tangible gifts. The white person has food. The white person has medicine. The white person has built a little water well for them. The white person then gave them some shoes. So anytime a white person pops up, the white person is grinning. Even though in the white person's mind, the white person, they're grinning and bringing a pair of shoes, but they just dropped off some goddamn Ebola in the river. But they haven't figured that out. But they just brought you some a fresh pair of J's. They done brought you... A weave. You did white daddy didn't showed up. White mommy didn't showed up bringing some gifts. So now you think whiteness is goodness. Everything white, good things come out of it. And then they say, hey, look, you want this sandwich? 
little Unduge. I got a delicious. I know you haven't eaten. I know you've been eating. Um, I know there's there's been a drought because we built a corporation down the street and fucked the water up. But yeah, that's neither here nor there. But I know you haven't eaten. But I have some. Um, I have something called a Popeye's chicken sandwich. I'm gonna give you the Popeye's chicken sandwich. It's so delicious. And by the way, before I give you the sandwich, um, have you accepted Jesus in your heart? Who is Jesus? Who is Jesus? Oh, Jesus is great. Uh, Jesus is the God of, of all things. He Jesus brought you this Popeye's chicken sandwich. He really did. He brought you chicken sandwich? Yes, taste it, taste it. And he takes a bite of that damn Popeye's chicken sandwich. Ooh, ooh this is delicious. That, that's Jesus. Jesus brought you that. Jesus brought the sandwich? I can't believe it. Tell me more about Jesus. So that Popeye's chicken sandwich hit his ass. That hunger is being fed, and she's talking about Jesus. So now, when she leaves, that nigga's like, where's Jesus? I need you. Dear God, please, Jesus, come back with a sandwich. This sandwich is so good. So now this nigga's praying for that sandwich. He's sandwiching Jesus. So now there's an equation. He done got fed, and it was some white man who did it. Some mythological white man who did it, who, who got him that delicious sandwich. So now he's starving for the next few weeks, dreaming about that fucking Popeye sandwich. You know, he ain't got no rice. He's, you know, eating old rice from China. Eating, oh, shit. I, I got to pretend it's a sandwich. I got to pretend. So he's thinking about that goddamn Popeye sandwich, eating that fucked up rice. Shit. Oh, when is Jesus coming? Where's Jesus coming? Oh, this is bullshit. This is bullshit. Where's Jesus? Then the white person show back up. Then he starts bucking. Them eyes get to bucking when he see the white person come with some more Jesus paraphernalia and two sandwiches. Ooh, my prayers have been answered. Jesus is back with two sandwiches. I love Jesus so much. Tell me more about Jesus. So now this nigga is a full-fledged Christian who believes in white Jesus. Ain't nothing wrong with Christianity if you believe the Africanness of it. But now, Jesus, white, goodness, God, all becomes one and the same. You know? So you you eating good, they're telling you Jesus brought it, and they're making you recite this shit. They're converting you. Now, before I give you the sandwich, let's pray. Thou Father, which, which art in heaven. Now, we got to understand forgiveness. Forgiveness. Do I get the sandwich? No, no, no. We got to read some more. Um, so we're going to read a little bit more here. Let's, let's bring your children in so we can read. And you, you, you eating that sandwich and your kids get that sandwich. Their little eyes get the bucking. Ooh. Papa, who is the white woman? She's telling about Jesus. Oh. So everybody's eyes are bucking now. Everybody's fucking eyes are bucking now. They're converting people, putting white God in their minds, associating that with goodness. So now you don't want to mess that up. You don't want to mess that up. So now they are here giving you these Popeye's chicken sandwiches, telling you to forgive and pray, and we're, we're all in this together, and... Jesus forgives while they're poisoning your community and they're like, well, I heard there's some there's some little rocks over here that we're going to I'm going to bring in some guys from a corporation um, called De Beers. Don't worry about them, um, but we're going to bring more chicken sandwiches. We're going to move your village over a little bit. We're going to move your village over. What we're going to do, we're going to build a water well. Ooh, what do, ooh, we can wash down the chicken. Yes, you can wash down that delicious chicken. With this water well we're about to build you. See how great we are? Now we're going to get a trillion dollars worth of diamonds sitting under your black ass that you don't know how to get your damn self. You're sitting under a trillion dollars, but don't, don't, don't worry about that. Those, those chicken sandwiches, that's going to be the lick for you, Unduge. Oh, you're so, so good people. Not like those Akatas. Oh, yeah. If any black Americans come around here, listen, those are niggers, okay? Those niggers are hard. You know, over there in America, you know what they do? They're Crips and Bloods. They they do drive-by shootings. They're um, they have a bunch of children out of wedlock. They're a bunch of baby mamas 
they're they're hood rats. Oh, I hate those niggas. You know, so so, <laughs> so now they they coo they coon vetting these niggas, turning them into coons. You mm -hmm. know? So they coon vetting them, turning them out. So if they do happen to come over here, well, they've already been been poisoned against us. But again, this is why two white people can go over there and start running shit, smacking folks around, and ain't nobody gonna do nothing because they've been taught generation after generation. The this is the person who brings those delicious chicken sandwiches. So I can't fight Karen. I can't fight Bob, the, the, the missionary. Those chicken sandwiches are delicious. You understand? They bring those Jesus sandwiches over there and brainwash it because they, they create a system of deprivation and then come with the solution. So let's bring back the Haitian Revolution. What they said, hey, they said, first of all, spiritually, get that white God out of our damn system. Forget about the damn chicken sandwiches. All right? The chicken sandwiches ain't working. They're abusing us over here. The white God ain't it. The white man is horrible. God knows. They wised up and said, what God is going to let these people do this shit to us? What kind of fucking God is that? That's we're, we're worshiping the wrong God. They woke up and said, hey, Bookman said, hey, nigga, we're worshiping the wrong fucking gods out here. What God wants us to sit up and get abused and raped and our kids sold? And these people, these French are doing horrible shit to us. Shout out to everybody. Shout out to everybody sending stuff on the cash app. A lot of folks are sending cash apps tonight. Much respect to y'all. So my man said, we're going to tap back into the real gods that's going to work for us. Remember, they still understood some of their African heritage they understood some of those African religions and they brought that in with voodoo. They said, this is going to work for us. Let's conjure up those gods of revenge. Let's do blood sacrifices with these animals. They made it real. Let's get these bebes popping out here. Let's get these memes and bebes popping. Let's call on Ogun, Papa Legba. Let's get this shit popping. And they start turning up. And then everybody got on code. Enough people got on code. See, that's the thing. Enough folks got on code. And the Haitians said, look, part of the voodoo and the voodoo was basically you don't fear death. You understand death is just a transition. The body is just a vessel. Your spirit lives on forever. This is one thing that they instilled. This is why they got rid of their fear of dying, which was very important. The Haitians understood, okay, we're going to live forever. So we don't have to let our bodies and spirit, because we're letting our spirit be abused as well as our bodies. So even if we die physically, we don't really die. They understood that. They realized that. So that's why the fear of death was gone. When they got rid of the fear of death, it was a wrap. That was the key right there. The voodoo with Ogun, that helped them get rid of the fear of death. And the people fighting the Haitians, they kept commenting on how fearless these niggas were. You understand? They kept commenting on how fearless they were. Study 1804, we talked about this. We talked about how the Haitians, when they were fighting, even when some of them were getting killed, they said, if we get killed, you better know how to die. If these people are killing you, learn how to die. You die with dignity. You learn how to die with bravery. Don't be sitting here crying and groveling. You die like a G. We talked about that in 1804. See, black folks, we got this thing. Every time the race soldiers come around and these white supremacists are coming at us, threatening us. Niggas get to groveling. Oh, Lord, I didn't do nothing. 
Lord, why are you doing this? I didn't do nothing. Stop all that fucking crying. Stop all that crying. That's one thing. When we stop doing that, we'll start getting on the right path. See, crying and all that shit, we're begging for sympathy. These people ain't got no sympathy. Stop all that crying shit. We got to stop all that groveling and crying. Oh, look what you did to my family. Nah. They got rid of that shit. They're like, we ain't doing all that groveling. We're going to die with our head up. So if we die, we're going to die with our head up because we're going to fight with our heads up. That was the mantra. Learn how to die. You think? And they understood revenge. Key thing. They understood they got their spirit together. They understood vengeance, an eye for a fucking eye. You understand? They understood getting rid of the fear. Those three things, that's in here. This is why they defeated not just France. What y'all got to understand, they defeated three militaries. France, Britain, and Spain. They defeated three militaries. And these were people, remember, these were people who were slaves, who didn't initially have any weapons. These were people who did not have no weapons. These were unarmed, unresourced people with rags on, with no weapons. And they beat three armies, guys. They defeated three goddamn armies. You understand? And they did it because of them getting rid of the fear of dying. They're like, we're going to go all the way out. And they had everybody on code. They would die with pride. You had people going on suicide missions. You had children fighting and going on suicide missions. We talked about this in 1804. When they brought in cannons, you would have a Haitian, a Haitian kid would go jump in a cannon and the kid would sacrifice his life. The kid would get killed because it would stop the cannonball. The cannonball would kill the child. And he knew he was going to die. But this kid was on code. And he knew I could fit in that cannon. I'm doing this for my culture. They did kamikaze missions. They went in, stopped those cannons, and then the Haitian... Adults would come in slicing and dicing. You dig? This is why when they talk about the Haitian Revolution, if they talk about it, which they don't like talking about it, they'll talk about Toussaint. Because Toussaint was one of the leaders. But they'll talk about him because Toussaint wanted to be diplomatic. And he was a great leader, but Toussaint wanted to be a little bit too diplomatic. Toussaint had a, his, when he was enslaved, his master was kind of a kind guy. He wasn't as brutal. So Toussaint actually helped his master get free, by the way. He helped his master, a former master, get off the island. A lot of folks don't know that. I think we talked about that in 1804, but he got his master off the island. So he kind of had compassion for certain white people. He had compassion for the French because he wanted to be seen as a French general a respected French general, and that was his downfall. See, Jean uh, um, um, Toussaint, even though he was great, deep down, he still felt like, okay, maybe I can work together with these people. We can come to some agreement with each other, and that was his downfall. They said, okay, we're gonna use that to his, and we're gonna use that to our advantage. So they said, hey, Toussaint, come on over here, man. Yeah, Toussaint thought he was a Frenchman. They said, Toussaint, come on here, let's, let's talk, let's, let's negotiate. So they got him and captured him, exiled him, and starved him to death, and he died. So they don't mind, white historians, they don't mind talking about Toussaint. What they don't like talking about is Dessalines. White society and white historians don't even like to mention Dessalines' name. You understand what I'm saying? That's the one they don't like talking about. Because Dessalines, when he came up and took over, Dessalines said, hey, look here. I'm not Tucson, nigga. 
So this negotiating and we could no, I ain't French. I don't want to be French. This is not going to be a French colony. Any white person here, either you with us or against us. Now the French, all of them are getting this foot up their asses. Now any other people, what you want, because you're going to get the same work. Dessaline wasn't playing with these folks. He was unapologetic. Dessaline was like, look, how many of us got, how many Haitians got killed today? 100, okay. Go kill 200 French. And I want, I'm going to go over there, wherever they are, I want y'all to go kill 200. And when I come there tomorrow, I want to see 200 of them dead. Yeah. It was just that simple. You kill 500 of us, 500 French are going to die in the morning. It's that simple. They don't mention Dessaline. Dessaline wasn't playing. Recently, when they named the street, did they name that street Dessaline out there in Brooklyn? They were they changed the name of the street out there to Dessaline's Boulevard or Dessaline's Avenue or something. I think they changed. Did they change the name? Where are my Brooklyn people? Where are my Brooklyn people? Did they change that street name out there in New York in Brooklyn? They change. Is it what's it? Dessaline Avenue, Dessaline Street. What is it? I know it's in Brooklyn, and when the people wanted to change the name of the street, boy, the white supremacists were mad as shit. Oh, they were up in arms over that. They were really pissed off over that. They're like, hey, Dessalines was a terrorist. Yeah, I know Tucker the Sucker. Tucker Carlson was mad. Oh, they were really pissed off that they were naming a street after Dessaline. And this, their, their logic was so damn flawed. They were like, well, Dessaline, he killed innocent women and children. But it was a war. He was opposed to. They were killing innocent Black men, women, and children, it was a war. It was an eye for an eye. Dessaline committed a massacre. They, they like to use the term massacre when it came to Dessaline. It's John Jock Dessaline Boulevard, Brooklyn. Okay. But they like to use the term massacre to imply that it was an unfair victory. He killed a bunch of innocent people unfairly. See, when people use the term massacre, they always use that to imply it was unfair. No, it was very fair. It was very fair. No. They think that black folks were just supposed to be slaves. You were supposed to be enslaved and just take it supposed to rise up and cut that bullshit out. That's why they don't like Dessaline. Dessaline was like, all those people over there, all them French, all those slave masses, what was that, what was, what was the term? Bulika, Sepulchre, I forgot the, some of those terms, those terms I forgot. It was like, what, off with their heads and burn their houses down. Sepulchre, Bubik, what the, what the hell is that term? I can't think of it right now. We're my, my Haitian brothers in here. But he was like, yeah, all them French cut their fucking heads off and burn their houses down. Because see, Dessaline, he was abused by his white slave owner. His white slave owner abused him very badly, so he never forgot that shit. Yeah, they said the same thing to Nat Turner, yeah. Yeah. Coupetet Bulika, yeah. Coupetet Bulika. That's right. Burn it down, off with their heads, cut their heads off, burn it down. Coupetet Bulika, yeah, that was a mantra. 
Kupitet Bulika. That was a mantra out there in Haiti. That was a mantra. Cut their fucking heads off and burn their shit down. So tapping into that, that, that spiritual system, that was the first step right there. That, that was the thing that's going to give you that internal power. You understand? And just getting the right spiritual energy around you is very important. Now, when we did the movie 1804, which uh, that's required viewing, by the way. Everything I'm telling you guys now, it's in the movie 1804 in vivid color. It's a, in vivid action. One of the best movies I've done. Because we had a great time doing that movie. I put a lot of energy in that movie. Let me tell you something. When we did that movie, and I've talked about this before, we, we got costumes that were actually old French costumes from the 1800s. There's a, a very famous costume shop out here that's very expensive, by the way, that Hollywood uses. So we would get these French outfits, these French military outfits. And also, what we got for the people who enslaved we got the wardrobe from the original Roots movie. We got the wardrobe from the original Roots movie. And that was that gave us kind of a spiritual boost. You understand? Because that energy, Roots was a very powerful movie. So the, the outfits that we, we were very meticulous about a lot of details and stuff. We didn't just get a whole bunch of clothes from Walmart to rip them up. No, we got the costumes with that 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 cloth and the fabric. It, it was real it was real authentic. And when we were filming especially the fight scenes, what we did because I had a couple of some of the brothers who were actors in the film. We had some some Haitian brothers. We had a, a couple of Haitian brothers who were um in some of the fight scenes. We had a great time. I hired so many people. And one night we did a voodoo ceremony. We did a reenactment of the Bois Cayman voodoo ceremony. We did it on, we, we filmed on location over in Altadena. We had a real big, I, I shoot a lot of stuff at this place, but it's a big, like a farm place that we, we did. And there, there was like a wooded area and we did the Bois Cayman reenactment where they had the voodoo ceremony. And some of the brothers were giving us voodoo chants to say. They were giving us legit voodoo chants because they, they grew up you know, around that. And so they knew certain words and terms and certain mantras and chants. And we were doing that shit. We were doing it at night. So that shit must have conjured up some real spirits in niggas. We're doing this shit, so brothers started getting turned up for real doing these voodoo chants because when we start doing the fight scenes with all my white actors and my white extras, and I, I've talked about this many times before, these brothers start whooping their asses for real. So when I said action, these brothers, the black dudes who were dressed like slaves, started jumping out of trees and bushes and doing all types of crazy flips and kicking these people all in the mouth. And I'm like, whoa, hold, 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 cut, hold on, oh. Yeah, they were beating the white guys up for real. I'm like, oh, okay, y'all gonna fuck up the movie insurance doing, y'all, let's, let's bring it down a, just a little bit. Ooh, let's bring it down just, that's why when you look at the movie, y'all like, ooh, that shit looks real. Yeah, it was real. I'm like, oh, they, we done fucked around and conjured up a hoodoo. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, oh, okay. Let, let's let's bring that down a let's let's bring it down a little bit. Yeah, but these brothers was doing all types of flips. Look at the movie. You look at all the shit they were doing. This was it. It looked real. It looked very real. And we were like really in the woods. So. <laughs> <laughs> they were getting it in. These brothers was kicking, fighting. One dude, my man did a kick on one guy. This one white dude, he, because I'm, I was kind of far away. I was like, action. 
So the brother, the, the white French dude was supposed to come around the corner with a musket. And then the brother was supposed to jump out of a tree and, you know, kick, but kind of kick at him. And I was like, action. So the brother jumped out the tree and jumped in the air and kicked. And then the, the white actor fell back. I'm like, oh, shit, that's a great take. Yes. Now let's do, let's do a, another one from another angle. So I went around the corner, and this motherfucker was still laid out. I'm like, oh, shit. He was still. I say, okay, cut. This motherfucker wouldn't move. I said, brush. Oh, so, uh oh. I said, I said, brother, you all right? No. I'm not trying to laugh at dude. I don't want my motherfucker to see this. Oh, this fucker tried to hurt me, man. No, I wasn't. If you're looking, I, we weren't trying to hurt you, brother. But. <laughs> Yeah, this is an 1804. He turned into he turned into Scooter the Shooter. Fucking A, man. Fucking ouch, dude. I said, uh-oh. I said, okay, you all right, brother? Oh. So, <laughs> yeah, I said, don't break. Yeah, you're supposed to be French. Hello, wee oui, wee. Oui. Bon de nuit. Hello, Fonse, we we fucking ouch, dude. Fucking hurts, man. They start breaking character on my ass. You're supposed to be French, dude. <laughs> le le we oui. fucking fucking dude. Ouch, man. Your fucking foot hurts, dude. Pole ah. fuck. Give me a knife. Well, they were breaking character. I said, okay, let's, okay, we got to bring this down a little bit. We got to bring it down just a little bit. They, they turn into white crispy. Are you serious, man? Are you serious? Are, you stole me, everybody. You stole me, everybody. Are you serious? So I think I saw one of them in a French costume on the phone. Hello, police? Yes, I was just kicked by a, a Haitian slave. Yes. I don't know where I am, dude. I'm in Haiti in 1804. I don't know what year it is, man. Just send somebody, dude. I think they called the police on our ass. All right, brothers, let's let's bring it down. Let's bring it down. Let's bring it down a little bit. But, uh, bring that shit down. But um, yeah, well that that spirit got their ass. The spirit got up in them brothers, heavy. Yeah, the spirit got up in them heavy. Like I said, it was one girl. We're doing a scene. Where we were all there was like a scene where everybody was being housed in a ship, and and so one sister started freaking out. Oh, okay. It was it was it was a very good movie. We had a lot of fun doing that movie, and again, the casting of that movie was phenomenal. The casting, oh, we we lucked up with the casting. We we got so many great folks. The guy who played um, the guy who played um. Rochambeau, he was great because he he really spoke French and he he was into fencing for real. He was great. The guy who played him, Rochambeau was great. The guy who played Napoleon, white guy named Scotty, he was great. Go watch that movie. We it was that's such a good movie, man. The casting was great. We got a motherfucker who looked just like Napoleon. It was an actor named Scotty. I can't think of Scotty's last name. He's a short dude because Napoleon Bonaparte was very short. So he went, he said, he went and got his hair cut like Napoleon. This motherfucker looked just like Napoleon. Oh, no, no. The moist dude played Tucson. The moist dude played Tucson. But the dude who played Dessaline, he looked like, he was a big, muscular brother. He was great playing Dessaline. The guy who played Napoleon was phenomenal. Phenomenal guy. I mean, this motherfucker looked just like Napoleon. Great guy. Now the guy who played Tucson, and he, he, the guy who played Tucson, 
Well, the thing is, the guy looked like Toussaint, and what we had to do, if you look at 1804, you see we had to make him look older. We had to make the guy look, he was, he was young, but he looked like all the paintings of Toussaint Louverture, so I had a great makeup staff. We had some hot shot makeup artists, so they made him look older. They put gray in his hair, and you know, if you he he looked older in the movie. Also, yeah, this guy, good guy by the way, very good brother, real good guy. He was a little moist. He was a little moist. I don't know what the brother, what his lifestyle was. He very good brother, and I'm not saying this is not an insult. This is not an insult, but he was a little moist. But he was a good dude. He was a good dude. He was a good dude. I hired him. He was a good dude. Because he was just a little moist, I couldn't really keep the fight scenes. That's why if you look at the movie, you don't see the guy playing Toussaint in any fight scenes. If you notice, we just kind of have him being still. You know, we'll show him kind of walking and standing. We'll just move the camera around. Good guy, and I'm not saying this to distance. He was a real good, but he was a little moist. He was a little, a very good brother, though. He was a good brother. Good brother, and that's my brother. Much respect, but he, nigga. The fight scene, no. I couldn't, I couldn't keep the fight scenes with the brother, man. I couldn't keep the fight scenes with him. Yeah, that, that wasn't going to work at all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you don't, yeah, he wasn't fighting in the movie. I cut his fight scenes out. I cut his fight scenes out. You know. Because my nigga, he had a sword. And I said action. That nigga, was, that nigga was swinging. That nigga started swinging like that. I said, oh, shit, okay, all right. Yeah, yeah, that. That's, yeah, we're going to cut that out. We're going to cut that out. But he was a good dude. Just He was a real good dude, though. So, you know, we, we played up everybody's strengths. And, you know, we kind of, you know, downplayed the weaknesses. You know, what, what worked, we, we kept. What didn't work, we, we, didn't, we didn't have in. I, I want everybody to look good. Yeah, I want everybody to, to look good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, but he he did good for the scenes we had him in. He the brother did good for the scenes we had him in. Yeah. Where's D? Is D Tubman in? Where, where is she? I haven't seen D in here tonight. Is she in here? I haven't seen D Tubman in here. Oh, it is. How long have I been on tonight? Fifteen. We've been going on long tonight, man. We're going on long and strong. I didn't know it was this late. We we in here heavy. But yeah, go, you gotta go see. Eighteen oh four. You can stream it. You can go to eighteen oh four movie dot com, or you can go to hiddencoloursfilm dot com to see the movie. You can stream it, or you can get the DVD. But it's mandatory. Y'all need to study that film. I've got to study that film. Hit the thumbs up button. We still in here. Oh, D is in here. What's up, D? What's up, D? Shout out to D. D is in the room. Everybody say what's up to Miss D Tubman. D posted some. <laughs> D posted J Slim's book cover. <laughs> J Slim started following D. The infamous J Slim. Shout out to J Slim, guys. J Slim, are you in here? Shout out to J Slim. The legend that is J Slim. J Slim is still doing his thing. The infamous J Slim. Um, yeah, he's married now. Ugh. <laughs> the poem man. Oh, y'all don't understand how funny the J. Slim saga was. And this is why you know, I'm very careful about people kind of randomly advertising certain things. 
because when I was doing my Instagram live, there was a brother who was a poet, and he actually was pretty good. The brother was pretty good. But he was like, hey, man, you know, I do poems, man. Can I promote my poem book? I said, wait, hold, hold on that way, brother. We're not going to... Mm. We, we've had some, some things with poems and poets before, brother. So we were... Mm. Yeah, with the poems. Um, yeah, we, we kind of had a little issue with that before, so I don't... Yeah, we don't really let people promote poems like that unless we really vet them. Yeah, last time that happened, all of us almost became accessories to a potential crime. <laughs> the infamous Jay Slim. <laughs> How many, some of y'all don't remember, some of y'all are new. A lot of y'all are new, and y'all might have heard us mention J Slim before the infamous J Slim. This was back. This had to be a decade ago, almost a decade, at least a decade ago, on my OU stream shows. There was this brother named J Slim who called up to the show, and J Slim is a good guy. He's a, a he wears glasses. A, a brother, he's kind of a nerdy guy. J Slim is kind of a he was a nerdy guy. I'm, I'm me, who is J Slim? J Slim on my OU stream show. And I used to broadcast on Ustream. Um, this brother called up and said he wanted to promote his poem book. He wrote poems. And again, this is kind of a nerdy, kind of a shy, reserved brother. So I'm like, oh, okay, he's just kind of a mellow, kind of nerdy brother. Hey, man, yeah, um, you know, I, I, I know you're an author, Tariq, and I'm an author, and I wrote a book of poems, and I wanted to know... If I could promote my book. He seemed like a very mild-mannered, innocent dude. So it was very non-threatening. That was the thing. He's a UCJ Slim looks like a, a look like a librarian or something. Oh man, he, he wouldn't hurt a fly. Oh, the nicest little sweetest guy ever. Not sweet as far as that, but just a real nice, oh man. Yeah, brother. And I was like, oh yeah, man, you seem like a cool brother. Yeah, what you got a poem book? Oh, that's cool, brother. Write poems. That's what's up, man. You're a fellow author, man. I like to see new brothers get in the mix, bro. So yeah, man, you can promote your poem book. What's, what's your name of your book? Yeah, it's called um, Blood From My Heart. Blood From My Heart, huh? Oh. That's, that's an interesting title. <laughs> um, what's, what's, what kind of poems do you do, brother? Yeah, I do... Um, I do like a lot of romance, romance, um, you know, kind of exotic, erotic poems. Okay, I'm like, now it's getting kind of, it's getting interesting. Okay, really? Because he's like such a kind of, like a Clark Kent type of dude. I'm like, really? You don't look like, you know, you don't seem like you would do, you know, erotic poems, right? Okay. Blood from my heart, Okay. You know, you know, you know, I'm thinking he's about to do poems about butterflies. Like, yeah, he's like, yeah, I do romantic poems. Yeah, man, you know, you know, kind of romantic for the ladies, you know, spiritual. I said, okay, um, where can I see your poems? Where can I see these poems? Hold on, man. Yeah, where, where, where can I see these poems, Jay? Yeah, go to my website, like, bloodfrommyheart.com or some shit. It was something. I said, okay. So... <laughs> So I go to the website, and there's a, a, a big heart with an arrow and blood coming off the heart. I'm like, okay, okay, this this is this is getting this is getting real interesting right here, brother. So I said, okay, okay, where, where, hmm. okay. So where, where can I start here? Now now it's it's getting real intriguing now. So yeah, start with um, start with this poem, you know, sexual <laughs> love assassination, some shit. I said, okay, I said, let me read. Let's see, let's read one of your poems and just kind of see where it's going here. Let's let's read one of them, brother. Yeah, let's let's read one of your poems. And the thing is, the poems they would start off kind of normal, then it would go way the fuck left. It started off cool, and then that shit would go way over here. 
So, okay, okay, let's check out one of your poems. Okay. <clears throat> I think of you daily. I think of you now. I want to be your lover. I would like to be your spouse. But if I can't have your love, I don't want to go. Because I will creep up from behind and grab you by your throat. I was say, bro, what, what, what's that? Hmm. I said, damn, brother, that, hmm. That's, that, that's kind of, yeah, that, it would, hmm. Damn, Jay, what, that, that's kind of creepy, brother. <laughs> oh, no, you got to read another one. No, see, that, yeah, you got to read another one, brother. Holy, okay. Okay, read it. Okay, no, see. Okay, this one, you got to read it. It's called um, Silent But Sexual. And the titles were all weird. It was all these weird titles. Yeah, you got to read Silent But Sexual. Okay. All right, brother, okay. I sit there in the park. I see you jogging by. You are looking the other way. You do not catch my eye. When I walk up from behind, you think that it's a dream, but your mouth is not covered because no one can hear you scream. I said, damn. All this shit had something to do with creeping up on bitches. I'm like, damn, bro, this shit is real rapey sounding, brother. No, man, no, 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 it's, it's exotic. What he was trying to do, I think he was trying to be like on some Fifty Shades of Grey, try to make it sound like aggressive, erotic, but it it mm, it wasn't coming off like that. Like nigga, this shit is real non consensual. <laughs> and everybody in the chat room was like, "Oh shit, is there anybody in that nigga's area missing?" Yeah, nigga, these poems were freaking everybody the fuck out, nigga. Nigga, these poems are a beast, brother. Yeah, it was something about a tub. Yeah, it was something about a fucking tub. Everything had something to do it, it, it with... He was trying to be... It was like super aggressive, erotic, but it was so non-consensual. <laughs> it was real rapey, like, nigga. Okay, 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 look. Okay. Okay, the, you gotta read the, the other one, okay. This, I got another one, it's better. This is more erotic. It's called um, Liquid Lust. Okay. Okay, I don't, I don't even want to read this shit. Mm. Yeah, I, I'm like, now everybody's nervous. This nigga, remember, y'all Y'all remember, this nigga's poems was making people nervous. Everybody like, can we, anybody recognize this nigga's voice? <laughs> Does this nigga sound familiar? If, are there any victims out here that we need to... Report. This nigga was creeping us the fuck out with these poems. <laughs> like, okay, what's liquid lust? Okay, <clears throat> liquid lust. <clears throat> water, water everywhere, but not a drop to drink. I take a trip to your house. We make love over the sink. I fill the tub with water. I fill it nice and high. I push your head in the water, you drown, and then you die. Nigga, but that, hmm, I, I don't know about that one, brother. No, 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 see, death is a metaphor. That's like a metaphor for orgasm. No, 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 mm, that, that didn't, that didn't really come off metaphorically. That, 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 that didn't really... That doesn't really work, brother. That 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 don't sound right, brother. Nigga. He was trying to say all this crazy shit was metaphors. And, mm, but you're not you're not really expressing the metaphors right, brother. That that shit sounds rapey than a motherfucker. This nigga was creeping us the hell out. So man, I when I I, I met him, I met this brother. <laughs> 
in Atlanta. I met him, and I met him and his wife, and I saw his, his wife, his a lovely sister, real cool sister. And I'm like, hey, I'm Jay Slim, this is my wife. And I was looking at her like, sister, blink if you need help. So, you know, I was kind of giving codes. Are, are you a hostage? I'm like, shit, say something, blink. If, I need to, if this nigga got you against your will. So, <laughs> nigga. Yes, Jason eventually, oh, he got married years later. And then his poems got a little more mellow. He, he still did some more poems, but his po after he got married, his poems kind of mellowed out some. So I'm like, yes, keep that nigga married. Keep him off the streets. Because with him single, this nigga is acting out. Yeah. Man. So shout out to Jay Slim. Yeah, the poem got a little less rapey a little bit later. So, man. Yeah, I'm still on, man. I got to get out of here. Because they told him to stay. Yeah, his wife got him right. <laughs> Nigga. Yeah, shout out to Jay Slim. Shout out to Jay Slim, the legend. The legend that is Jay Slim. Man, man, man. So his wife made him start his medication over. Yeah. Y'all got to. I posted up a tweet with one of the poems, a sexual assassination. Literally, that's the name of the title. Y'all think I'm, I'm not exaggerating. Some of this shit, y'all, you know, is, is, read that. If you find it, one of the poems is sexual assassination. That shit is all over the place. You know? Yeah, but he's good now, so shout out to Jay Slim. Anyway, let me get out of here, man. I've been on here. I've been on here for three hours with y'all ass. I haven't done a long broadcast like this in a long time, man. This is a long one. I haven't done. I haven't done a three-hour joint in a long time, man. That's what's up, man. Hope y'all, all y'all got the Mink Slide album. Hope everybody got the Mink Slide album, ladies and gentlemen. Hope y'all got that. Crushed Velvet by Mink Slide, ladies and gentlemen. Crushed Velvet. That's the album. You get that at the link below if you're watching. And you don't see the link, um, go to minkslide.com. But again, go get 1804, the movie 1804. You guys are going to really enjoy that. Study that. Study that movie, man. It, it talks about military science. Y'all need to study that. You dig? And y'all follow me on Instagram at Tariq Elite. If you're not following me, follow me at Tariq Elite on Instagram. All right? Yes, Crush Velvet. Like I said, all this week, it's in the top album sales on Billboard. Hold on. Let me show y'all. One second. Hold on one second. Let's, because I got my thing up here. Let me show y'all this. Hold on. Now, uh, hold on. And I'd like to thank everybody for getting the album. Thank everybody for getting the album this week. Uh, where am I? Where am I? Where am I? Where am I? Okay. Um, let me see. Da, da, da. iTunes charts. I'm looking at the iTunes charts too. Let me see where we are on the iTunes charts. I'm looking at a bunch of different charts here. Uh, hold on one second. Movement. Let me see. Crush Velvet. Uh, was top 50 on iTunes. It went up to, out of all the, I'm looking at some of these other charts here, by the way. Okay. Let me pull up my screen here. So what's this? Crush Velvet, iTunes charts, Billboard charts. So yeah, current album charts. You see us right there. Billboard, you can Google that. You got to have an account to get on the Billboard charts online, but you can see that. So we're in the top 100 on Billboard. Let's go to, let's see, we're on the iTunes charts. Let me see, Google Play Music. Let me see what we're doing on Google Play Music charts real quickly. 
Um, Google Play, Google Play. Let's see where we are on Google Play. Music charts. Y'all bear with me one second. Let me double check that. Where the hell are we? Hold on. How the hell do I get to Google Play Music? Hold on. Y'all bear with me one second. But um, y'all got to go to, let me see. Let me go to R&B. Hold on one second. Da, 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 da. Let's go to Google Play and get that. Yeah, we're still on the Google Play charts here. Okay, yeah, we're still doing our thing on the Google Play charts. That's us on the Google Play charts. Crush Velvet, so we're still doing our thing there. So go get that Google Play, get it on iTunes, get it on Amazon, ladies and gentlemen. Stream it on Spotify. A lot of y'all got Spotify. <laughs> Somebody said sexual surgery. Um, yeah. Go to Spotify, all that stuff. Stream it. All that good stuff. All right. And go to minkslide.com. Oh, yeah, we got mink, we got some new Mink Slide t-shirts. So a lot of y'all been wanting Mink Slide t-shirts. Get the new Mink Slide t-shirts at different colors. We got different colors at minkslide.com. Get your t-shirts. They're real cheap. They're like 25 bucks, 30 bucks. So minkslide.com. Get your new Mink Slide t-shirt. We got